welcome to the Midnight Podcast. I'm Liz. I'm joined by Therese and our good hey. friends Anne, Caro, and Annie, who have been gracious enough to join us this Monday, which I guess is tax day for all of us, but Annie. <laughs> oh, what is it? <laughs> so theft welcome, day, welcome. yeah. National Theft Day. Happy Monday to everybody. Hope you had a decent weekend and a decent week. We're here. Yay. We're here. <laughs> Yay. We my, earbuds, my earbuds are acting weird, but we'll just ignore that. So. Okay. And hello, Timo. You do definitely belong here. Yeah. Just hi, everyone belongs here. We're well, we're thrilled when anybody comes. Oh, so thank you, Timo, and everyone oh, else. We love Emma. the chat. Who so let Annie in here? Shout out to Pirate. Annie's welcome. <laughs> she wants to come lost here. Pirate. <laughs> there you go. Can't believe in my way. Go. So welcome, chat. Thanks for showing up again. Um, Joe's had things she had to do today, so she will be here next week. Aww. So sadly, she couldn't be here today. Yeah. Pretty sure. But she's busy. We're lucky to have her friends. I know I she's busy. Out her a surprise sighting, anyways. You know, Joe's kids, here going, our kids yeah. going to college, all that good stuff. You know, probably, probably a murder shawl. You know, I doubt it. <laughs> Pretty sure she's do. not getting a Myrtle shawl. <laughs> so, what, what's everybody working on? A hat. Hat. Oh, Let your beanie? It's my weekly hat, yes. Nice. Oh, very cool. That's very cool. Yeah, There'll be a lot of warm heads, so. Well, I mean, I, I think I talked about before, but, like, my my charity incentive is to make, like, one hat to donate at the at Christmas time. So, hopefully, people will not have cold heads around Christmas. Thanks. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Hello, Amy. Sorry you're not here. Hello, Amy, where are you? Amy. She's, uh, in the chat. She's got a sick child at home. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. Sick man child at home. Boy child. So yeah, you know, boy it's child. It's man, a different, man, different boy, level of yeah. the mom having to yeah. deal with. Girl children are different. So hopefully she'll make it next time. <laughs> oh. Pirate, we have a good chat. We, our mods are, don't have to do a lot of work here most of the time. So, yeah. Oh, wait, Joe's here. <gasps> Where is Joe? Oh. Except it's not letting me add her to the thing. Oh, no. Come on. Amy, are being a poopy head. It's, it's, saying it's not letting me add her to the stage. It's really weird. Oh, no. I've never seen that before. Really yeah, weird. the hooligans come out. At, it just says, Joe Bob. Hey, Joe, go out and come back in. What we yeah, Joe, you. yeah, <laughs> Joe, go out and come back in. Maybe that, <laughs> yeah, because it's not, I thought, yeah, to do. really weird. I thought she wasn't making it, but I'm glad she's here. She can get in. <clears throat> That'd be crazy. So, Empty how's your shawl coming, Carol? Oh wow! I'm working on your shawl. God, I love that color. Yay. That color That's so pretty. So oh, that's Which color do you pop. like? Joe, pop I like that. says you need to re rejoin. He also said no yeah. Aussies allowed. So ignore that second part. <sighs> Make up your mind. <laughs> I love that last color, the orange color. It's like an uh, like a rusty apricot color. I love that. This one. Yeah, I want a whole yeah. sweater in that. Right, I thought you meant the other one, which is a bit, bit way too loud, really. Well, the orange before, well, but I love that. I just love that. <clears throat> I don't yeah, know it's what unusual. It's like a rusty. Yeah, apricot this won't let me. Won't let yeah, me add I don't know what's going on. So, I just there. Are there like too many people on, or no? no we we can have up to ten. We can That's have up to ten. It's just so in her name and the camera symbol blocked out. And when I go to add, it just has her name and it says ban or kick from studio. But it She's won't let me ban? Add studio. Oh, no, I, I could, no, it said I could ban or kick from the studio, but it won't let me add to the stage. So I don't know. I don't want to kick her. I let her go don't out and come back her. on her own. So, <laughs> no. So, Trace, what are you working on? Me? Oh. Yeah. Okay, so this is going to take a little bit. So, welcome to crochet night. 
Yay. We are glad you're here. Um, I have <laughs> four. Into her, okay. Objects. I have four finished objects. Whoa. And that's Whoa. why I'm in crochet mode because you get four finished objects in one week. Right. So you've seen this one already. This, I have a, uh, oh, what's it called? The shawl, the, the, the briar cardigan. And you're not going to be able to see it because my lighting sucks. Why can you? But I have a cardigan. Ooh. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Nice. Okay. Very nice. Mm. And it took me, it would have taken me about 10 days, but seeming sat there for five days, me procrastinating on seeming. And then finally I sucked it up and did it. I also Yay. have. I have a bag. A bag. Hold on. Let me get That's it right. Bags. I have a bag. A um, bag. I got to get it right. Oh, okay. So this bag, let me try to, uh, so much camera. It's a bag. It's a crochet. It's a half double, I think half double crochet bag. It oh, has nice. a strap. Oh, I'm nice. going to get... It has a flap you put your button on. Oh, I'm going to try to get nice. I want to get a button that's kind of like a piece of driftwood or something like that. Something kind of rustic. Uh -huh. So there's that. And then I have I have new friends. Tell me your friend. Popsky says it's a hippie bag. Yes, it is. And I don't care. Okay. This is this is Hen Solo. Aww. <laughs> Hen Solo. Aww. That's so cute. This is um emotional support chick from our friend Jackie from Crochet DHD. She did it. Oh, nice. Her. And then Hen Solo has a friend. And her name is Amy Henhouse. <laughs> That's pretty. There, I'm supposed to make you big. Oh, there you go. See. Oh, boy. Very big. Ooh. Amy Henhouse. <laughs> Aw. These are fun. They take a couple hours to make, and they're just, you know, it's something to just cleanse your palate and do funny things. I'm working on a cool. t-shirt right now. Um, Crochet? What's that? Crochet. Crochet. Um, I have a um, a knitted T-shirt that's coming up, but I'm kind of procrastinating because it's in fingering weight and it's going to take a while. I'm trying so, there, Tomsky. What? What are you doing? It's in producer mode because I changed the layout. Oh. I'm trying. You could probably show up and and tell us what to do. <laughs> I hope Joe comes back. Right. So that's what I'm working on. That's what I'm doing. A lot of stuff. Nice. Annie, Who's I can that? guess what you're working on. <laughs> we know. Yep. It's so cool. She's getting down to the end. This is very yeah. exciting. Not that far to go. Oh, it's so cool. Are you getting tired of the mohair? No. Um, I've enjoyed it all. I think it's because uh, you just plod on with it and it, I don't have to worry about any other knitting. Mm -hmm. Just have to think about this one. Mm -hmm. I daren't stop because if I stop, I'll never finish, will I? So I just have to carry on. <laughs> yeah, we know you could show you up could, and help. You, 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 you could. You could try. Yeah. <laughs> we talk back. That's the thing. And, and we don't listen very well. That's <laughs> part of our charm. We do our own. Yes. You're still here, so there's something you like about us. I like seeing Millie on your latest podcast, Annie. Yeah, she looks so, she looks much so good. Yeah. Yeah, it's quite amazing, really, isn't it? Never give up on an old cat. <laughs> oh. She's eaten loads today. She, she's like, came in me sewing room and meowed at me, so I'd go and feed her, and then 
I've learned to leave a big dish full of food out for her <laughs> overnight. So oh. overnight she empties it. Yes, she does. Um, yeah. Um, oh, Annie, here's a message to you from Chomsky. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he was very annoyed that he got a knitting ad, like we've ruined his knitting ad of it. <laughs> the company you keep. Well, it's a sign. You have to start knitting. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to hold my breath on that. <laughs> I. Well, he's a connoisseur of knitted objects. He is not going to be a knitter, I don't think. I don't think so. But he could surprise me. You never know. He could be a hooker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm hearing him. Me and Neil can go and teach him. Right. Yeah, there you go. You guys could have your little night, your knit night. You could have a knit night, yeah. In, in person. Well, you'd have to stay at least overnight, you know, because it's so well, far. Well, because it's so far. <laughs> Neil wouldn't be able to just go right back and forth. Because, you know. Yeah, that distance is how long it takes me to get to work. Right, exactly. <laughs> like, <laughs> yes. Really, Tomsky, I did not know that. But thank you for sharing. That's where he makes all his money. I know. I used to drive. I used to have a commute when I lived in New Jersey mm -hmm. to work. Yeah. I mean, 45 minutes and an hour and a half, depending on traffic. So, so did you stop overnight every day? Like, <laughs> No, I did occasionally stop for coffee on my way in in the morning. Oh. But. I did not stop overnight. It just wasn't done. So, it was not the power. proper thing to do. One no. returned home at the end of the day, regardless of the sojourn. Yeah, I mean, I guess people like it maybe because America's so big and people just aren't, you know, surprised about taking road trips a day, you know, for a day. Like, Oh, let's go to the Grand Canyon. Or it's only, you know, four hours away. Right. I don't know. It must be different. We do too. In the world. I do two hours and for a day out and come back. Oh, Neil. Neil <laughs> that. He'd be exhausted. <laughs> Was it like that when you were in England, Tara, where people not do they just stick around? Their, their usual haunts, or yeah, did people um, travel a lot? Normally, when our family came over, it was with the intention to stay over, um, but it did take four hours for us to get from one house to another house. So it was definitely kind of one of those like, I really want to see you if I'm going to drive this far. So yeah, yeah. And then I always had to give up my bedroom. Oh, well, you're the kid. So. Yeah, and it was like, okay, yeah. you have to give up your bed and sleep on the floor. And I was like, remember oh. one time I was on the floor and I was like, when I grow up and I have children of my own, this will not be a thing. We will not. I will get the yeah. uncomfortable, lumpy sofa that guests have to sleep on. So they'll think twice about staying at my place to go to a hotel. Exactly. <laughs> or the <laughs> yeah. that will just slowly deflate. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I get it, Tom. I get it. We have better roads. Hey. So. There she oh. is. Oh, I didn't think you were making it Hello. today. Joe Bob. Sorry about my grand late entrance. Thank you, StreamYard motherfuckers. Uh, so dramatic. <laughs> so dramatic. Here I was ready a whole minute and a half before you guys went on air. And StreamYard just wouldn't let me. It just wouldn't let me. It's a conspiracy. I don't know. It's weird. It's because it missed you. It's a conspiracy. You. Hello, ladies. Hello, Caro. Hello. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. I have some questions for you today. Hello, <laughs> Miss Annie. Hello. <laughs> Hello. How are you? Tired. <laughs> oh, me too, lovely. Me too. Hello, Miss Anne Pinkava. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Your last podcast. Your last pod. Uh, pff, words. <laughs> English. Your last podcast was very informative and very enjoyable. Thank you so much mm -hmm. for making the time early in the morning to come out and chat to us. I appreciate you. It was fun. It was fun. Um, there, there's a message for you, Joe Bob. 
Ah, oh, StreamYard doesn't appreciate F Annery. Yes, no. <laughs> no, you sound like Carrie. <laughs> Probably because last time you were on, you weren't in your usual location, so it didn't oh. have it on this week, you know. That's true. Didn't recognize admit, the not mobile office. Could be. Well, mobile office has got a bit of a sun issue. Perhaps I should get my sunshade and put it up on my window here. What a problem to have. Lo lovely autumn okay. day. Excuse me. Well, I'll just move the furniture around. There we go. I forgot oh. what the sun looks like. Yeah, I mean, oh, no. oh, that might be better. I'm struggling here. Why? You can do it. I believe in you. <laughs> I'm glad somebody does. Hang on, let's see. All the technical apparatus. <laughs> kind of, sort of. Okay, I should just move my car. When the council workers move their big mower, they must have gone for breakfast because they're not here and their trucks are here and their mower's here. I'll move my mobile office in a minute. That's the fun of being mobile. You are rocking that bob with this, Joe. It looks good. No. Oh, the little really bobby. Good. Yep. Thank you. I'm overdue. I got to do something. It's a it's a it's a tactical response against um, winter here because the hats fit well because short hair, less time in the shower, and I hate having showers in winter. I could be a real pom and just have a bath once a week. I reckon. I love my hat. <laughs> I love my hat. Um, yeah, I don't. I, I do it. not like having the long wet hair on the back of my neck. And no. in winter, I. I I don't use a hair dryer, especially with solar power. Gosh, if I tried to blow dry my hair for half an hour, we'd have no power for the rest of the week. <laughs> so, tactical That's response good. to winter. That's funny. You all saying, "Oh yeah, spring, get your hair cut," and I'm sitting here thinking, "No, spring's okay. We've got plenty of hot water in spring and summer. It's just in the winter. I don't want to be having wet hair at night." Or, yeah. I guess that's why Victoriana people used to have baths before um, lunch yep. because the weather was probably the best at that time of the day. Well, our, our electric company here has certain hours that are better than others to do stuff. So from the hours of three to seven, they raise the rates so you can't do anything. Oh, so yeah. we have to Pink. raise, Pink. yeah, use the dryer, use the washer, use everything but between, you know, whatever. Okay. Three to seven, no, don't touch anything. Like, oh, that's when people make dinner. That's when people get home and do stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Yeah. I remember when I used to pay for power, I think off peak was something like 11 p.m. at night. And I'm thinking, oh, my gosh. Yeah. Stay yeah, up like just old, or run the washing like the machine. the old long that distance. Old long distance times where if you call right. after nine PM you got discounts call long me after distance rate. Yeah. I do, I do have fond, fond memories of my dad with the egg timer watching mum on the phone to family members because yeah, that's what I was gonna talk to Caro about today. Uh, my dad was in the army for twenty years, so we often moved every year or second year and away from family. So poor mum, being the youngest of seven, you know, coming from such a large family, of course she wanted to speak to family. And uh, it was long distance back then and dad had the old egg timer out and when that time was up, you got to hang up because it was too expensive. Mm-hmm. Wasn't it like 35 cents a minute or something? That seems to yeah. be stuck in my head. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that was back Absolutely. in the eighties. Yep. Mm -hmm. I remember phone cards. You could buy the long distance phone cards, or like get them for oh, like yeah. ten cents a minute for long distance. Yeah, I did yeah. that for a long time. Yeah, because when I was in the military, they would give out phone call uh, minute cards. Yeah. So you would like yeah. dial the number through that, and then that's how like mm -hmm. I would do most of my long distance calls, at least until I ran out of cards, and then I was like, I can't get more. Yeah, that's my husband yeah. had when he was in the in the army. Yeah. So, Caro, how long were you in the military for? And what I was wondering was, what, what kind of job did you do? 
Um, I was in for five years and then they threatened to medically separate me because I had worn my kneecaps out to the point where I was struggling to maintain fitness regulations. So the conversation I had with the doctor at the time was, if I give you another waiver, they're just going to kick you out. So I was like, okay, I'll just finish out my term and get out. Uh, as for my job, what I wanted to go in for was what they call an on-site engineer, which is when you are on the aircraft and if something on the aircraft breaks, uh, you're there to fix it. That's what I wanted to do. But the aircraft that I wanted to do it on was going to be retired in 12 months. And I didn't really feel the need to go to school for two years for an aircraft that was going to be retired in one year. So, um, I, yeah, so I ended up deciding to go with a field that's referred to as personnel because I was like, that's the nine to five, right? Like, I don't have to work 12 hours on the flight line then. And that is when I learned everybody's business. Like anything that involved you in any capacity, at some point I was going to know about you joined the military, you left the military, you had kids, you lost kids, you had in-laws, you lost in-laws, whatever. At some point you had to come and talk to me. Wow. That's what I could have had, I could have had my own gossip magazine. Yeah. That's like a <laughs> Oprah show or something. Yeah. Yeah. And so sometimes. Said, hmm? Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, and I was going to say, like, I saw some people get kicked out of the military for like, the most crazy things and what was uh what's what's an interesting thing is if your child gets in trouble on base and they get kicked off base they still because they are in a foreign country have to go to school right like that's the bare minimum because they can't they don't have the option to go to an offside school so mm -hmm. but then the family can't stay on so the whole family has to move off base because of this one kid and i found that out because one kid decided to to spit on the base commander's car <laughs> Oh. So, so he got kicked off base and his option was be sent back to America or the family gets moved off base. And I was like, that's fascinating. I didn't know that. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. Um, and then another time we kicked somebody out of the military because he was doing a little bit of a scheme where he was taking um, furniture that we had reserved for military people and like their housing stuff. And he was just selling it. Right. Wow. It's oh still, God. it's, it's still technically government property. You shouldn't sell it. Um, and then what made it really awkward was that he was my coworker. Oh, um, oh, dear. oh so, no. so for a couple of days, he didn't show up to work. And then uh, in the middle of the week, he showed up in an orange suit with uh, MPs on either side of him. He was like, don't oh, ask. Really? I was like, I actually have to. So what's going on? <laughs> Not being nosy. Oh, just wow. my job. Oh yeah. I just have to know. I'm sorry. Crazy. And, and so, personal question now, not like that wasn't personal enough. <laughs> Where did you meet your husband? Where? How did you meet him? Uh, so, I met him in Japan when I was serving over there. And uh, initially, when I met him, he was brought into my office. And like I said, there's nothing that goes on with you that doesn't go through me. So, first time I met him, he was in processing on the base. And at that time, um, I was a uh, I was politely referred to as the bitch at the MPF uh, because every time somebody would want something, I would be the person that would have to tell them no and cite regulations on them. And so that was how that was his first impression of me. <laughs> but then we we actually met um, at a gaming group because he was becoming the GM for our game group, and so he got to like know me as like a and D player and all of that. And then uh, I made advancements right. towards him, and they were welcomed, and then we got married. So that was pretty much Aww. it. Aww. <laughs> wow. That's a lovely story. But you had all the insider information on him, so you were at a greater advantage than he was. Yeah, I even had his blood type. That was good. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my <laughs> You need a blood test to get married. No, 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 we're fine. I ran it already. Well, we're yeah, I already saw it. You're good. <laughs> Hilarious. So with all of that, you would have had access to their medical files as well. Not that in depth. I mean, like Not um in the for, Yeah, that's like that's more like HIPAA stuff. That's what we call that. Um, but the only reason mm -hmm. I would know blood type is because they put it on the uh, military ID card. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I would know that. Wow. Huh. Oh, and in Japan. Okay, that's lovely. That's fine. It's very cool. When you when you finished um, your service, where did you move to? Um, so we did what you... we did. Well, and so we moved to America out of a, what we call a bereavement move because my so. 
uh, there's a custom in my husband's family, which they don't like to acknowledge, but uh, it's it's definitely a thing where you don't really meet the family until you go to the graveyard. That's because somebody's passed away. So the first time I met my husband's family was two weeks after we got married to his mother's funeral. And that's that's when I met everybody. Um, wow. So, yeah, it was it was a terrible accident tragedy situation that occurred and so at that time because his his brothers were still both teenagers and all of this we put in for a bereavement move to be close to them in case they needed anything so while we were still in we moved to phoenix arizona and initially phoenix arizona catfished me because when i first went there i was like man this place is beautiful and i love it and i was going there in the fall so the weather was great and stuff like that and I was I was ready to spend the rest of my life there, and it took me 15 years to leave. <laughs> sure wow. Yeah. Oh. oh, I want to know which one of you knitters out there is the crazy cat person with a hundred cats in Minnesota. You're all on the news, whoever you are. It's got to be a knitter, surely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've not heard of this. And Minnesota's my neighbor. Yeah, well, Minnesota you live there. Yeah, a hundred cats. Yeah. 100 it, cats. it happened a few days ago. A hundred cats removed from somebody's home. I'm sure it's got to be a knitter. Who else would have patience for a hundred cats? I'm a knitter, and I don't have lady? patience for that. No. Oh, bye, Cheryl. <laughs> Glad you made it. Oh, bye, Cheryl. Hey, Minnesota used to be so normal, and now it's like. Yeah. Well, hey, Sydney used to be so normal too. Have you all seen the yeah, news? What is going last... on? Yeah. What is yeah, going on course. in your country, my friend? We're we're going to hell. Did They're you see what happened? Uh, everybody. Yeah. The two. Yeah. The bishop at the Assyrian. Yeah. A, a bishop at the Assyrian Orthodox Church was stabbed last night. Yeah, but oh, did yeah. you see? Did yeah. you see that the blade, the blade didn't did engage not or whatever. Oh, Which, I've, I've hmm. watched it on slow mo five stabs before he realized that the blade hadn't um, been opened or it maybe yeah. it closed on the first one. I'm not sure. Uh, but he got in another good five or six stabs after that. And, and how amazing was the congregation? If you haven't watched it, there's a short, mm. gruesome video on uh, yeah. X which shows um, Bishop Ma, Ma, Ma Mary Emmanuel giving a sermon, live streaming his sermon, as apparently he always does. Um, mm -hmm. And, yeah, a young 16-year-old boy rushed him at the altar and uh, He's gave him a little up chop. Yeah. yeah, well, they, at first they said 15. Now the reports this morning are 16. A, a young Whatever. man gave him a big touch chop, yelling the infamous um, yeah, yeah, yeah. word yeah. of the culture. Yeah. So I, I didn't get much sleep that. last night watching over 2,000 people congregate because it was live streamed. It was straight on the, you know, people were straight well, on. Well, that was it. right after, wasn't there a yeah. mall where somebody stabbed a bunch of people? Yeah, he stabbed. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The shopping center. What happened? That, that young yeah, man, meant, he was 40 yeah. years old. He, he, Yeah, he was diagnosed as a schizophrenic at 17, and uh, he's had a, a lengthy battle with mental health. Uh, yeah, that was not culturally. Said. That was not culturally. No, but it uh, still still needs to be addressed. Like you know. Sure, it does. It Mental needs health. To be um, did, you, did you see that um, woman who went to that town hall victory. in California, protesting, saying yes. that uh, that she would see they would see them all dead. And yeah. whatnot, you know, her, her rant. And then they arrested her and charged her with 16 felonies. And she's felonies. crying. Boo, hoo, hoo. Yeah, she's crying when she, you know, it dawned on her. It's like, well, you know, you make threats. People are going to take you seriously. And they You're gave her like a million dollars bond. And then you want to cry. Yeah. Yeah. They it's do that rough. to us at work all the time. Too. Like, we get, we get these crazy people that always threaten to come visit us and make like sounds in the background or actually show the the item in question in a photo or something like that and then like when we take appropriate action you know to prepare for it they're always like you're overreacting why would you act that way and stuff like that and i'm kind of like well how many times has it been somebody that was on somebody's radar that does these things 
Exactly. It's a lot. Yeah. yeah. No. So not that I want to talk about stuff that I write or anything like that, but there was a, um, there was a book I wrote and it had to do with somebody that did actually go and commit harm to another person. And I did have commentary about how, you know, folks talked about like that person was weird and we just didn't want to deal with it. Or we, you know, it was somebody else's problem, you know, that deferment of action kind of thing. And I wanted mm -hmm. to do that because a lot of people really, um, like when these warning signs do pop up, like trying to do something about it is really difficult. And mm -hmm. I encountered that a lot when I was a teacher. Cause like I had like, I think in my, in the five years when I was teaching, I had two kids that definitely like hit my radar where I wish there was a hotline that I could call and be kind of like, this is so-and-so these are his numbers and figures that you need to know. I'm pretty sure he's going to be on a clock tower in like five years. And I just want you yeah. to watch him. Just, just keep eyes on this, this, this weirdo. Yeah. So. Yeah. And that should be well, a that, thing, I think. Well, you Everybody know that little six, the six-year-old boy who shot his teacher, they arrested the assistant principal and mm -hmm. because she had been told that mm -hmm. he'd made those threats and blew him off. Yeah. You know, other That's teachers had come up to her and said, you know, the kid's telling people he has a gun and he'd been making threats and she just blew them all off. So they arrested her. Well, that you know, like the kid here in Michigan that shot up the school and the parents just got sentenced. Uh, I read about that. Yeah. Or whatever. That was heartbreaking because he, he know, knew he needed help, but he was begging people, his parents right. for help and they did nothing. Oh, they did less than nothing. They okay. fled. They we fled. Recap, yeah. They recap the them. whole thing for folks that don't know. Um, he shot up his, his parents bought him a gun and he shot up his school. I think he killed, or shot seven people. I don't know how many died. And it's a terribly unfortunate. But he knew he had mental issues. He was begging his parents for help. His mom was having an affair. So she wasn't around and didn't pay attention. You know, they basically just ignored him or bought him things to shut him up. Yep. And his dad wasn't paying attention. And they he got caught, you know, after stopped. And he's in jail for life, which I'm torn on because uh -huh. clearly he had mental issues. And I do think he needs to be going away, but I don't know that. I think a lot of it's just not just to, he's evil. I think he has mental issues too, but I don't know that they'll get addressed in prison. Um, and then the yeah. parents were charged for with reckless homicide because they were um, not properly supervising him and they bought him and gave him the gun and did not, um, you know, and, and, and well, the mother tried that. to cover it up. The mother, sure. the day the day of the shooting, the mother, I mean, I, I've kind of watched this because it's a local case. Um, mm -hmm. The day of the shooting, the mother texted him and said, Ethan, don't do it. Yeah. Like, don't do what, mom? You know. And then she yeah. tried to play it off like she's the victim. And the dad, the dad from, from jail was the prosecutor. the prosecutor. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. These are horrible, horrible people. And, you know, oh, the yeah. sins of the father. Well, you know what? Yeah, you raise kids, you know, to not do shit like that. You know? Yeah, I mean, I'm torn on the kid's part because, yes, he does need to be punished for, for what he did. But he was also, if they read his text messages that he was sending to friends begging his parents to help him, to get him help. And his mom just laughed at him. He knew yeah. he needed mental help. He knew he was struggling he knew he was going to crack and he told his parents and they basically laughed at him and ignored him yep so and then me, they fled. i don't know yeah and then they, they fled, fled after he was caught and they so they fled and they hired an attorney a private attorney for themselves and left him to have a public mm -hmm. defender yeah see i mean it's yep. just admit you know i, think I don't most know people in michigan here are like these people are crap and they all need to go away. You know, of course you're going to have some of your weirdos that are like, Honey. no, no, I totally blame the parents, but, and I blame him for his actions, but I also think that he had a lot of issues that maybe if his parents had gotten him help, he would not have sure. done what he'd done. He'd done. And I don't know that he's going to get the kind of help he needs in prison. No, and that's but a waste of the life too. I mean, yes, he needs to be punished. I'm not saying let him out, but I'm also saying, you know, this is a kid who knew he had trouble and he went to the adults in his life and they yep. did nothing. And to me, they're, they should have had way more time served. 
but you know, it's like that kid who killed the little che his neighbor cheerleader, and the mom was trying to cover it up by washing his jeans and hiding the evidence. It's like she should have been charged too. Mm. Yeah. Wanna, I'm sorry. You want to hear a good news story? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Can I tell you something? Something. Can I tell you a good news story, guys? <laughs> I I met a lady on a Sunday morning who was who was just walking around town. And she was on a mission to try to find a shop, any shop that might be open where she could get some clothing because her uh, friend had had an accident and needed a new pair of pants, jeans, trousers, whatever. And I very luckily had not unpacked my vehicle from our big road trip. We got back Friday night and this was Sunday morning and I still hadn't unpacked my car. And of course I overpacked and I had a couple of extra pair of jeans in my car which I hadn't worn. So I offered her those and she took a pair and came back and gave me this card. And I want to read it to you because she just, of course, tried to pay me money and I said, absolutely not. Um, I buy all my clothes from the charity store. So my jeans are all from the thrift store and she offered to wash them and send them back to me. And I said, no, please just go and donate them to a charity store if they don't fit you well and you know just for an emergency use for the day so that she could get home okay but you know what she did she came back and handed me this card and she said i don't know what this says but i hope it's suitable for today so you ready yep you will show me the path of life in your presence is fullness of joy at your right hand are pleasures forevermore psalm 16 11. How cool is that? Yep. So this lady who doesn't know me from Zip gave no. me this card. And I don't know who wrote that psalm, Psalm 16, but I thought, wasn't that a nice gesture that she gave me a little gesture. card? It's I lovely. thought it was really nice. And on the other side, it has a prayer, and I, I don't even know what church or what, you know, what church she goes to, and it says, Lord, I don't want to take one step without you. I reach up for your hand and ask that you lead me in your way. Thank you that no matter where I am right now, you will make a way. Amen. I just, I was just really touched oh, that she wanted to pass something <laughs> joyful to me, not knowing anything about me or what my beliefs are. And I thought, how cool is that? That to me, but that's kind is of faith, universal right? stuff. That doesn't have to be. You know, oh, I know. I don't know. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she could be Catholic, Lutheran, Protestant. I don't know. But because I wouldn't take any money and I didn't want her to go to the trouble, she just had this in her purse and handed it to me as a gift from her to me. And I thought that was a really positive thing. Really yeah. cool. As a thank you. So, yeah. So, I just wanted to pass that on to you girls today. I don't know if it means anything to you girls. But to me, it was just something, just a little spark of joy in my day. It was really lovely. So I was really happy to offload a pair of my jeans because, of course, I packed too much. I mean, if she had have asked if I knew anywhere where she could get a ball of wool from, I would have said no and just said no. I don't look in the back of my car. <laughs> I don't know, sorry. I'm not sharing. But all she needed was a pair of pants to get through the day. So I was more than happy to hand over a pair of jeans. I thought that was really good and really lovely. Oh, very very good. little shit happening around me in Sydney and you know, close by. So that's my good news story for this week. Oh, and Millie's bringing home a new cow. <laughs> this little cow. She's so Apparently, allegedly. Little. <laughs> allegedly. Allegedly, this coming weekend, so I've got the whole week to sort of get my head around it, Bruce is coming to live with us. Nip is going to have a brother, Bruce. 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 Okay. Yeah, Bruce Where did she acquire Bruce? I think she, how did she acquire him? She's Bruce. Oh, hours away. She's going for a drive with a girlfriend and a horse float to go and pick Bruce up. And Bruce <laughs> is apparently nine months old. Um, Millie just had it in her head that Nip needed a friend. So she just put it out there in the world that if anybody had a, a, a you know, a cow, a steer, whatever, that she would take for free and look after and love and um, possibly show, like handle and show. 
and all of a sudden Bruce from another young Bruce. girl has, has, has too many um, commitments. Now Bruce is coming to live with us this coming weekend. So I think I'm we'd sorry, a cow named Bruce is killing me. Oh. <laughs> I, so that, girl could Bruce. Ask, that girl could ask, ask for magic beans and they would appear to her. Oh, yeah. The way she, did. For her. I mean, she, she did a lot of work finding him online and then had to do a lot of work to find somebody with a trailer big enough because at nine months of age, he's a big boy. He's, he's a growing lad. Um, and also... Because I'm assuming it's not. What in? Yeah, right, Cherry. Right. Um, another I'm, thing. I'm sure David doesn't watch, but in case David's watching, he's going to be in shock now, and this is news to him. Apparently, there's a little critter called Cheddar, who goes meow meow, who's also coming to live with us, but nobody else knows yet. Because there's going to be a riot at my place when Cheddar turns up. Cheddar. <laughs> yeah, but you yeah. already have cats, Cheddar. Cheddar, I thought. Cheddar. I've already, already got cats? three cats. I've already got so three cats. More? But, well, you know, the two old girls are now eight, not 18 like our, our little Millie. But, um, <laughs> yeah, she's a little ginger cat, a little dark ginger ninja. And, and Millie's already named this ginger. bloody thing. So as soon as they get a name, they're on their way. So a friend yeah. has got Cheddar <laughs> and all Cheddar's brothers and sisters and Cheddar's coming one day. I don't know how. I don't know. David might pack Millie's bags and, tell, and pack Bruce and Nip's bags and Barney's oh, yeah. bags and Cheddar's and Daisy's bags and tell her to go find another dog house to live in. Does I don't cows know. have bags? That's interesting. Yeah, well, they have. Oh, we had to go and get him <laughs> We had to go and buy him stuff already, and he's not even here. Oh, so is Millie's a sophisticated like, child, to please. I would like to confirm yeah. and that Bruce is male and Bruce is yes. not castrated. <laughs> because I believe that makes Bruce is different in fences, that, nothing else. How does Bruce identify, is what she wants to know. Well, I haven't. <laughs> How many times I said how I identified when we're in Wagga is not funny because we saw all sorts of strange things and I would go to say something and Millie's going, don't, mum. And I'm like, but I identify. That's all I identify my kids do. as offended mostly. Oh, there was a guy in a hot pink dress and everything. And there was a guy trying to, in his hair in a ponytail with women's glasses on, trying to tell me that, his partner, his his partner is Cambodian or something, and I'm like, mm, and he kept referring to his partner as he, and I'm thinking, no, your partner is she, your mother of your child, the person who's the parent of your child she. is a she. So it was very interesting, and I had lots of those moments about identifying. Um, I haven't met Bruce yet, and the details are slim pickings. I just know that Bruce is going to be a friend for Nip. Therefore, I would hope that he was castrated. Um, but then she said she wanted to show him. So I'm not sure how that all works. I'm not sure about the rules and I will find out. I'll have a look and I'll let you know when he gets there. I'll have a look okay. underneath and let you know. I'll be behind. Whatever. Oh, my well, gosh. The Royal East is showing. At the Royal Easter show, I saw rams with with their things like an inch from the ground and they were kicking themselves. And I kept thinking, oh, to be a male sheep. Every time they took a step, they were kicking themselves. How painful is it to be a ram? Just feel sorry for rams, guys, because these guys, it wasn't like it was hot weather and they were just hanging low for, you know, freshness and comfort I, I i did I, i'm going to admit right here right now i did take a couple of photos because i knew you wouldn't believe me where's tom <laughs> he's still here tom -ski's probably like yeah i can understand how they feel that's why tom ski tom wears underpants i'm sure now. But, um, i hope he does i deleted I the photos tom ski's so, underpants okay let's not delete those that i don't want tidy this 
Welcome to Midnight, Actually, folks. You never know what the conversation's going to turn. We'll talk about stay, underwear. Stay tuned next time for the adventures of Bruce's identity. Why yeah, we'll I'm wondering now is there's three things I need. There's three choices I give Tomsky if he dares to answer double dog dare. Is he a whitey tidy? No, no, is he a boxer? Or is he a G string? Is he a G string? Maybe he's commando. You don't know. Oh, okay, I forgot fourth option. What do we do? And what are you working on? Yes, and we don't have a knitting. Not a G string. Please tell us about I your knitting. I think he's a tidy whitey. Yeah, I, I think, think he's so like too. that squirrel, anyway. Archie. I think he's a tidy whitey. Okay, Just my um, personal Ian, observations. Please save us, please. Well, I yeah, wrote, see, wrote down the name of this. This is very important. The Flower <laughs> Street Wrap um, by <laughs> Miss Cedar Freak. It's very Ooh. pretty. It's so pretty. The yarn is, is pretty. so pretty. Let me. Oh, is that that Julia Asselin yarn? Oh, hang on. There's uh, colors yes. in them. It's so pretty. It is yes. pretty. It's very oh, like wildflower yeah. looking. Yeah. yeah. Yes. The the first one. Um. Yeah, that's what it was called. I think it was actually called that wildflower. Was it? <laughs> wow. So you win. Um. But the next <laughs> one is. Hang on. The next one's called Helen Keller, which is uh, I don't know. Oh, cool! I would have to get hilarious because Helen Keller jokes are my favorite. Mm -hmm. um, but right. it's from uh, Callius Design, and she has all the ladies, or they—I mean, it's not just one dyer; it's multiple dyers. Do all the ladies? I would have had yeah. Helen Keller be a black yarn, but whatever. Um, you know, I loved on the podcast. You're like, oh, this. Young Julie, whatever, and I'm like, oh my god, I'd give you my right arm for a skein of Julie Asselin yarn. Oh my really? gosh! Okay, I, when I when it's I got stuff. it, um, beautiful yarn. Oh, it's it's lovely, and there's a little bit of cashmere in there. But I actually ended up getting it Ooh. at the uh, Nitty McPurley retreat that she, it, um, like everybody had a grab bag of yarn. And one of the skeins of yarn was one she dyed specifically for the retreat. And another just seemed to be like a random skein thrown in. So don't lovely. judge it. Not don't it. judge it. I'm not judging it at that's all. It's nice. very lovely. <laughs> Beautiful yarn. Well, I've only heard good things about her yarn. Yeah, for yeah. sure. So, yeah, well, since Anna's soft. here, I'm going to show off my finished object because it's going to be okay. in the next black magazine. Yes, for sure. Ooh, Ooh, yay. Nice. Lovely and pink of a actually helped me design this. Thank you, Anne. Oh, I'm still so thinking maybe we should have gone with the burly arms, but <laughs> giving them some muscles. Yeah. yeah. So it's a cow. It's a, got cables and color work and nice. It's sport weight. It's I use Malabrigo Arroyo and it'll be <sighs> in the next block. You can use any sport weight or DK. But I'm very excited because I did ladder back to card for the first time. For the oh, color, and man, that that's a game changer. It, Do you man, dare it turn it around? It I'll show. Yeah, because yeah, show when us. you're doing longer floats, you do the ladders show instead, us. and it stays stretchy. Yeah. Uh -huh. Mine's not perfect because yeah. I had to stop and start them, but that's okay. Nice. Yeah. That's okay. Oh. oh yeah. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you got the little ladders no, that you go up. Tidy. Yeah. But it's nice. It's still tidy. stretchy, but it's still stretchy it's tidy, though. Yeah. It's not like. It's not like color work when you, yeah, you, know, flirt, you do color work over flirts. four or five stitches and it tightens up. This is like uh -huh. it's stretchy. So nice. it was, yeah. I um, saw a video on how to do it. It's really simple. It's just a matter where you place them. And basically you're knitting the ladder. It's, it's on the needle in between your stitches, but it's actually positioned behind them. So mm -hmm. you curl that stitch with the float color every time. And then you knit across with your longer color and when you're done you don't need a ladder anymore you just knit the two stitches together and move on and it's like it closes mm -hmm. itself up oh so very i was very cool. excited nice for that technique tidy. thanks i'm very excited so mm -hmm. that'll be in the new block i sent it to neil sorry what? did you go to a meetup that i need to hear about no we had a video chat in the in one of our chat groups the other day Yesterday oh, no, no, no. I thought you went to the FNT meetup. 
No, I didn't get to go. I was going to go, but we oh. had some family things that happened. Oh, no, that I can't talk about. So I will go. I will go when they're back. When they're back oh, in town, that's I'll go. Sad. Oh. Um, we um, we had some I family drama. The news for this week. Yeah. You didn't no, get to I will. Worry. No, my daughter. Something came up with her, and she couldn't go with me. And so oh. I wasn't going to go down there by myself because it was okay. Insane. Oh, next but time. I that's will go next time. Fun. I will go next time. Yeah, I'm bummed, but I will go next time. So. Um, okay. Yeah, that made that made me sad. So, I, it, it looked like uh, Ryan was. Kind of out of control. I was about to say you missed the Ryan Tail karaoke night. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I know, and I was bummed, but I just by the time she got done doing what she needed to do, it was like mm. almost time for it to start, and then the lines, and then the traffic. It would have taken us right. an hour to get down there with traffic, and it was just like, mm. yeah. Um, yeah. But school comes first, so she had to do school stuff sure. and last minute meeting with her group. She's, oh, getting, she's getting her math. Yeah. She's getting her master's in business. She's technically done. Yep. She has one more test to do and then she's done. So right. it was the last meeting with her group and they sprung it's it on really her last cool. minute. So and she didn't have to kill anyone in priority. It was very close. It was, it was very I, close I to the group that the project might have ended in murder. Such a great time there. Yeah. Um group projects are not her favorite no. thing in not college good. anyway. And Ryan's karaoke. Um, yeah, you know my thing about group projects Ryan's is that karaoke they... was so bad. All of us, we would be superstars if we got a microphone. Oh yeah, I would not be a superstar. We'd be all belting out eighties songs. Oh, okay, so you... about, Joe? eighties for sure. Yeah, eighties. <laughs> yeah. So your cow's going in blocked magazine. Is that what you were saying before I rudely yep. interrupted you? Yep. Cool. We all rudely yeah. interrupt each other. It's, it's, okay. it's the bare arms issue. So the Clado has the arms holding the heart. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And I think the next issue is heroes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Super heroes. Yeah. I don't, heroes. In there. Heroes. Yeah. I I don't, don't know if Anne or Annie has anything going in, but I don't have anything going in. I don't know if it technically has to be superheroes. I think Neil just yeah. said heroes, but um, I don't yeah. think it's super route. Where heroes. Yeah. We're going there. Yeah. So, um, do you know who who's got the cover yet? No clue. <laughs> so, is he going to play you guys off against each other? No, Just I don't. Put you on a pit. Fight. Fight. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I had, I had good idea for the bare arms issue. I'm ninety nine percent sure I got it. But I don't. I don't have an idea for the superhero one yet. So. <sighs> yeah, I don't yeah, have. But a heroes for that don't one. always wear capes, so. No, exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. So what, heroes, is that the only so. thing you've been we working have, on, Liz? We have talked about. Uh, um, I'm working. I am working on another stock arm cardigan. Um, mm. because I needed a break from my ugly cat shawl, which is halfway done now. <sighs> I, I was going to be one of my garter questions. Break. Yeah, I needed a garter break. So okay. I started it with this um, blue that's from our friend Tina. Oh, yeah. Which is lovely. And then the stripes are going to be, and it's a gray with mm. um, rainbow different stripes in it for the sleeves. Oh, come on. That's so pretty. Oh, pretty. Yeah, so I wanted to work with Tina's yarn, so I started it. I have another one on the needles. But it's mostly black. So in case somebody decides to have another knit along that's mostly black yarn, I will save that to finish. <laughs> oh, it's a puritanical fun run. Yeah. If they don't, then I'll finish it towards the end of the year. But this is a really great pattern. It's from a Kelly Bean Knit. And if you've never knit a cardigan or a sweater, it's a great mm -hmm. beginner one. Even if you don't do the, mm -hmm. the stock, you know, the sleeves and different yarn, you could just do it in the same yarn. But it's a really well written cardigan yeah. pattern showing how to do set in sleeves and everything. So. so yeah, that's what I've been doing. What you've been doing, Joe Bob? Yeah, what are you working mm. on? Oh, still just the same old the same old, same old. This is the um muscle borough that I started a couple of weeks ago, a week ago, after I did the other two. So and it's really weird because I did I did go down to my wool room and another bloody possum tail. 
I swear to God, Ew. possum tails did not belong in my wool room. Thank you, cats. No. Um, no. But remember this. I saw this last night, Liz. I was having a quick, a quick fluff. And remember, I sent I sent you two of these as well. Mm -hmm. They're the little pairs of serendipitous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have yep. you made anything with yours yet? Hang Not on, yet, I need no. to put my shade up. It's sitting on my desk. Like, I haven't decided what to do with them yet. Oh, those are nice. Busy. Well, I yeah. I decided last night that these will be these will be a, the next muscle borough because they sort of okay. contrast, but they also complement with the burgundy and maroon that's in both of them. So one's mm -hmm. one colour will be like they're only fifty gram super soft sock yet uh, sock sets, approximately three hundred and ninety mm -hmm. meters. So yeah, yeah, so fiber lily, one of my favourite favourite. I can't find my camera today. Fiber lily is one of my favourite favourite top two dyers in Australia. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's got great yarn. Let's just admit, I've got yeah. tubs full of her yeah. stuff. And I just thought, well, that would make a really love because it's autumn here now. Musselboro, mm -hmm. the project that must not be named. Well, I'm on to three, but I've done others. I've done heaps yeah, of others. Yeah, you've like, done a number of them. Yeah. I've done Donna a number Stickens, of these. And I've it, just Donna sort of started did one, too. one and gone down as far as the yarn nearly runs out and then done a double brim instead of a double hat. So they're great stash busters if you've got, 50 grams or less hanging around and you want to put colours together or stripes. Um, so I pulled that out last night. And when I finished this one, which is not far off, how much have I got left? Um, yeah, not not far to go. When I finish that one, I'm going to cast on another one. I just, um, Donna yeah. Donna Fisher did, did, did the muscle burrow, but she also did another one. That instead of the muscle bra, she did it as in the pearl soho simply rib beanie. She just knitted mm -hmm. as oh, a muscle yeah. bra and just yeah, and just yeah. knit till she ran out of yarn. And the, yeah, and the change in the ribbing. Well, that's it. I mean, the pattern itself. If I was ever to review it, which I probably won't, um, you know, adult small size fits my pinhead, but I've used all bar. I should have used the whole lot. I've I've went to the measurement of the largest adult size for the length. And when I wear it, now that it is cold, I'm like, I, like oh, I could have that extra inch. I've got about an inch left of wool, knitted wool left. I, I could have really gone with all of it, and I probably I probably will with this skein. You never know. I mean, I don't weigh my skeins. I don't know if they're going to be exactly 400 metres or less, like this one's, that one's 390 altogether. So I'm just going to use up as much as I can. If there's little scraps left, I am thinking of doing the Jelly Roll blanket from Bakery Bears because I have a huge, I have a, a two-foot um, glass jar full of scraps and leftovers that I couldn't bear to throw out. Um, so I really want to make a project with those for myself. And it might not, might not cool. even be a blanket. I might just make a Jelly Roll wrap to wear. Yeah, with multiple. Not? Yeah, I yeah. saw that our friend Holly from Mystery Mouth Yarns put out her advent. Yeah, it, uh, I saw that. Um, Jessica Fletcher, Murder, She yeah, Wrote Advent. Which is an, an advent for the end of the year or is it for yeah, the middle of the year? the end year, of the year. Winter. For the for oh. winter. It's in, but, uh, she advertised winter. Now. They're all putting them out in April now. I know, but I did see Teal Torch. I was impressed though. Teal Torch Nips put theirs out but she's not calling it an advent because she doesn't want it to have a it's not a religious thing so she called she's a doing solstice, a 21 stain instead of 24 and doing winter solstice instead mm. oh, okay. okay sure instead, of, instead of having any kind of religious connotation but the solstice yeah. is a religious thing it's for right heathens <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> uh, we don't talk about that okay. yeah. Kara, Kara we don't talk about you know reality <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. I'll take my historical facts and go away. <laughs> so, Kara, no. Kara, tell me what you're working table. on. I want to see what you're, are you, what are you working on? Mickey and the hat. Okay. Yeah. Beanie. Okay. Yeah. How's your uh, saw uh, coming? Slow? Uh, I'll go get it and show you. Okay. Cool. Because this is a crochet podcast. Yes, it is. <laughs> Joe. I need to make. I have to Bob it before the end of the year. Our new friends. She missed them. Oh, I you got to see Teresa's new friends. 
We have, uh -oh. I have new friends. You did miss treats with new friends. No, but I totally busted open the, <gasps> the entire bucket. <gasps> did. Oh, it's look at them up. Yeah, you amazing. know, you know. And Pinkova, you know, after that podcast, I went to Amazon.com.au and I looked them up, and all I can get is a damn just party pack bag for like thirty-two or thirty-four dollars, something ridiculous, Ugh. just for a little bag. So yeah, eat them up. I hope you choke on that one, by the way. <laughs> just choke. Wow. Just choke. wow. Just choke on it. Because I cannot get that's a bucket a of Reese's cups. I cannot. That's a little hard. That's that, that's the same, no, same woman who got, who got that not. that's it's the same woman who got that lovely card earlier. You know. I'm jealous yeah. of Oh wow. Oh look that's at really Carol. That's, that's not done. Huge. It's getting that's big. Beautiful. It's that's yeah, so it pretty. I'm looking it forward is. to blocking it so I can make the stitches have more room. What yeah, the, is that beautiful. a pattern or did you do that yourself? It's a three row repeat. Okay. Nice. So you just do it until you're done with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. My favorite okay. kind. Yeah. I got this from, um, I think you guys mentioned her channel last week. It's, um, I forgot. She just hit a million subscribers kind of thing. Oh, bag a day. Yeah. Bag a day. Yeah. Cause yeah, you mentioned it. Awesome. I was like, this, I was like, that name sounds familiar, but she had talked she's about how awesome. to do this. Yeah. She yeah. mentioned how to do the three row repeat. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. I was like, that seems so simple. A caro can do it. And so a caro so far <laughs> has been able to do it. And I have still like this much yarn left. So nice. this isn't wow. going to be a shawl. It's going to be a cape. Okay. Cool. Ooh, even better. Yeah. Oh, that I could, like be, could yeah. be a cover on Blocked Magazine. Yes. Yeah, okay, so time. Yeah, so I told oh, you got till June. I think oh. the issue doesn't come out till June, right, Ann? Oh. Yeah, two months. Yeah, oh, I'll consider it. But yeah, so I told, work, I told work. I told work because I tell them about it, and so they're like, "What are you gonna do with the shawl?" It's like I'm gonna come in and give you paperwork and be like, "Do it again." And I'll take my shawl and like swoosh it, and then like she leave could the say room some heroes wear capes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Nice. So we could do an Obi Wan, you know, cloak cloak drop. That would be awesome. You know. Yeah, nice. Imagining, you know, somebody knocking on your door and you have that over your head and down. <laughs> like, yes. Yeah. I'm going to do it. <laughs> like, okay, the 80s and 90s, you take something from them, they leave, and you're like, go. <laughs> my, yeah. my 80s and 90s people, guess what show is being rebooted with the original cast? I don't want to hear about it. I know this. <laughs> no, I don't know if you know this one. The yeah. X-Files. Mm. No, 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 yep. no, no. Saying no doesn't stop it from happening. It will stop it. <laughs> I, I have the power to stop this. No. Also, Melrose Place is being rebooted with the original That's cast what I well. thought you were talking about. Oh. And Heroes is being rebooted, but I don't know if he's uh, going to be in the Whatever. <laughs> but yeah, I saw that X Abrams X -Files or thing, whatever his and I'm like, really? Really? We're doing the X-Files? Wait no, on. we're not. We're not. It's not a thing. It's not a okay. thing. I declare it's not a thing. The ending was weird anyway. We don't need to go back. It's fine. Right, yeah. right. You never exactly. get back to the early seasons. No. I don't even want to ask Annie what she's working on because I know what she's working on. You know what? <laughs> you know. It's so boring. Annie's no, sitting down for the water. It's so pretty. They're remaking Ghost? Are you kidding me, Elle? Seriously? What? I'm working no. on my Imagine It, so. No. I don't need them to remake Ghost. Yes, Murder <laughs> Yes, Murder Night is really pretty. Uh, I will only yes, watch are. it if they bring Whoopi back. They need to stop remaking Patrick Sweezy movies, okay? Because I watched the new Roadhouse, and let me tell you, it was a waste of time. No. Jake Gyllenhaal oh, yeah. tried to be charming. You like Patrick Swayze? Oh, no. But there's no, nobody in the movie who actually that was actually likable. Mm. It's like no. there was nobody likable. The story was dumb. Um, Conor McGregor should stick with UFC because acting is not his forte. Mm. I'm just saying. Yeah, Here's an idea. Seriously, Annie. Here's an idea. If it ain't broke, mind. don't fix it. But then how are they gonna make <laughs> money off of our nostalgia? <laughs> I don't care. I don't care because I'm not right. gonna I was see also it. doing 
They're also doing a live action. <laughs> they're doing a live action Sims movie and a live action Monopoly movie. Margot Robbie's what? doing, which I'm not sure how that works. No, no. I don't know, it's Annie. Not... I like your murder mitt shawl. I love yeah. it. It's Thank nice. you. I think it's pretty. pretty. Nice yarn. It's just the yarn. Nice the yarn. yarn's really nice. Yeah. <laughs> it's so pretty. Yeah. I, I, was you I, think, I think everybody <laughs> should do a murder knit shawl. That's I what I think. Right. What is, what is a murder knit shawl? shawl? You guys say it's it and I know it's going to be bad. Tabitha, okay, our friend, just this. On and her on and on. Her name is Murder Knit. And mm -hmm. she knit a shawl and she kind of altered the pattern and came up Why with this very lost? simple, very basic pattern. It's, too it's basically you can do it with any yarn, any size, any you needle. You can do it in crochet. You can, and some coming up with a crochet Glory. version as well. Mm -hmm. but, what, like, do you, and, is there like a murder mystery, and you have to change your pattern based off of who you think it is? Not even that. No. Oh, no, it's like, that's like, something that Anne could come different. up with. <laughs> I was excited Anne and about Amy. that. <laughs> Anne and Amy, that would be cool. Um, yeah. No, it's just a very basic, simple, good pattern yeah. to knit when you don't want to have to concentrate too hard. And Joe just, for some reason, hates it. Yeah. Because she's, yeah. she's subversive. Why? It's not like Tabitha invented the design. It's, she's, so it's nothing against she did. my dear Whoa. friend Tabitha. No, my love. Oh, are you kidding me? Tatum, Channing Tatum. Channing no. Tatum's going to reprise the Patrick yeah. Stacey role in Ghost. No, 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 no. See, no, and you oh, laugh at me when no. I say no, but then you all say no, no. Well, I, no. okay, here's the thing. No, I'm not saying it's not going to happen. I know it's going to happen regardless if I say no. no I need to say I'm no. I'm not no. going to watch it. It's not a thing. It's not a thing. Why can't they just make something new? New? Oh. Well, because the writers because are on strike. They have. They have no ideas. Okay. They are. I don't know how to advertise new. We yeah. have these really annoying programs here where they'll be talking about sort of a classic comedy, mm -hmm. but instead of playing the classic comedy, they're just talking about it. So they show you a clip and then there's somebody talking about it and then somebody else talking about it. Then somebody else then show you another clip. <laughs> and that's just, why don't you just play the comedy? Mm -hmm. Probably because it's uh, is... not PC anymore. <laughs> yeah, right. Probably. Yeah. Sure. You know, yeah. This, yeah. this the most people. creative, this creative like trying generation to has no market. ideas of their own. No. Oh, hello. So what, what else are you working on, here. Annie? You're working on something else besides that. Aha. Uh -huh. I, oh. I love those bright colors. Oh. Are you going to go with that? Go into what? Browns. Uh, maybe brown. I've got like a mustard that may be next. Oh, nice. uh, oh nice. how many more wedges oh, yeah. do you have to do? Transition. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's too hard to look at. <laughs> you get I'm, the trophy I'm now waiting. Um, I do need my dark color that's being yeah, that's dyed. Especially. At least she's doing it for you. That's oh, yeah, awesome. That, yeah, that was really good. Yeah, it was better than I expected. Great. Yeah. That's very nice of her, the dyer to, and and for her to yeah. say that's easily repeatable. So that was lovely. I did see. Um, I've only bought one online, so I must have bought one from a stall when I was at a store near York. Oh yeah. Um, so I think I think that's where I bought it from because that's where she's based. And then bought another one, and now I need another one. You're almost to the end. I did get a package from England, though, from uh, <gasps> Siobhan Crafts. Who I love her yarn because her yarn's all bright colors. And I got her Vincent Van Gogh starry oh. night colorway. Yeah, good it came colors. with a bag. It came with a bag. Nice. Oh, yeah. And then Sorry. a little bitty yeah. bag, too. A little bitty bag where you can put your stitch markers and things oh. in there. Oh, yeah, it had, it had, had scissors and little star stitch markers and things so it was really cute and i'm a sucker for anything vincent van gogh so i had to get it yeah because i love van gogh so, i like his painting of a cow actually 
the laying down cow that Vincent Van Gogh did. Have you seen it? Mm-hmm. You can name it Bruce. Yeah, yeah Bruce. This, is, this is DK, but it's Sparkle DK, which I had never seen before. Oh, is so it'll that? probably be a hat of some kind. Yeah, it's sparkly. Oh, I love the colors. Yeah, oh, yeah, sparkle. some sparkles in. So it'll probably Very be a hat, I think. Cool. Um, yeah. So that's my excitement. Nice what else yeah. you've been acquiring? Um, Where did you find her my, online? I bought, she I bought from her before. Things? Years ago when I first started buying hand dyed yarn. Someone recommended her okay. to me because of prices. Even shipping into America, they're very affordable. And yeah. um, she does very bright, fun colors. And she also does half skeins of solid colors. So if you need, you know, something to go with it, you can get a half skein for like eight pounds or 12 oh, pounds or something. Yeah. yeah. And she's very sweet and a lot of neon, but a lot of fun colorways. Someone recommended me to her years ago and I bought a couple yeah. of games every now and then but i really like anything with van gogh colors so i got that one yeah, nice. in the bag in the notions pouch yeah you did the yeah. whole bag yeah i think it was like forty dollars for the whole thing plus really? shipping yeah yeah. Nice. yeah she's pretty affordable the shipping can be a little much because it's from england but you know yeah i think i think her full skeins are like 16 pounds or something to translate to like 20 dollars us Something like that. Yeah. So they're not bad. Yeah, she, she, yeah, she usually does fingering and DK weight and some bulky. Mm -hmm. And she also does like um, mini skeins and stitch marker sets, you know, hair bear stuff and unicorn stuff. But. Very nice. Yeah. So. And you said you're doing another um, stripy sleeves. Yep. Yeah, I got the mustache yarn for that. And I ordered it Friday and it came today and I didn't pay for extra shipping or anything. So wow. it shipped from Texas and got here today. So that was pretty impressive. That's it's gray yeah. and then it's got thin, narrow um, stripes of color. So uh, it'll be easy to match up on the sleeves. Yeah. You know, I went, oh, I went through my stash the other day mm -hmm. and kind of had a little bit of a panic attack. Oh, and I'm like, I gotta stop. I gotta stop. It's not like you. It's not like you found a possum tail. <laughs> no, no. But, but I'm liable to. There's no telling what's, you know. Um, and you know the 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 yarn. Okay, when I die, Alyssa will get the yarn, and that's okay because she, you know, she but there's that. fabric. We'll go through there's it. fabric, and also there's an obscene amount of fiber. Like I really mm -hmm. need to get spinning. Um, mm -hmm. It's it's bad, it's really bad. Um, so I'm trying to plan out, and I'm trying. I'm like having a little bit of a crisis about what I'm going to do with all this stuff. It's almost as if you could okay. spin your fiber and make it penguano. I know, but it's yarn or something. I know. I could I could spin for twenty penguanos. Okay. It's it's bad. Well, I think it's, it's a good time to spin too. during the summer. I think the summer's the best time to to well, I'm to manipulate. Yes, that I agree. Place. So I'm yeah, trying to so. I'm trying to I'm looking. I did a I did a list that what I have have to do and what I want to do, and so all yeah. the knit alongs and the so you know there's uh, Shark Week and there's Summer Murder and there's um, <laughs> Jackie has her. I love the eighties, you know, make along and there's all the different ones. So I'm trying to see what yeah. I can combine with other ones. So I found mm -hmm. this, this fiber that I have, that's like very bright pink and brave. It's sparkly and it's green. And it's, I'm like, okay, I could make yeah. that for this make along and the eighties minute, you know, so I'm trying to, I'm trying to match all the stuff mm -hmm. with the stuff I have and it's still not enough. So, yeah, and then um, you'll pull out your fabric, and you'll make a matching bag for each project. I'm, I'm no, no bags. I'm I'm working on clothing. Cool. It's a lot. It's a lot. Okay, so so really, is there actually a real plan, or are you just having a moment in your claustrophobia? I had a moment. 
I had a moment. Yeah. And now I have a plan. There's a real Someone. plan. There's there's okay. there's a plan developing. Yeah, so what are you working plan? on right now? What are you working on right now and what's next? I'm working on what's a t-shirt. I'm working on a granny oh. square t-shirt. Cool. Oh, this, is the, this is the second panel. Yeah. This is from that cotton that I got from Denise, Amy's sister. Uh, yeah. So I'm just making like a little t-shirt, you know. Um, the next thing yeah, is so that'll another go over knitted t-shirt. What's up? Will that go over like a camisole top or yeah, what do you gonna call it? Yeah, it's going to have to because it's top. granny square. Yeah. Um, we don't want any nipple slips. No, no nip slips. No. Mm -hmm. um, Tabitha's art will call it out if there are, I'm sure. Nobody, nobody mm -hmm. wants to see that. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, so I'm trying to, I'm trying to come up with a purposeful plan. What's like, next? What can I, what can I do with the most amount of yarn? Because <laughs> it's just obnoxious now, and it's kind of really? like a midlife existential crisis. Like I'm not going to live to Moses' age, so I'm going to mm -hmm. have to do something. Start crocheting or, a blanket. <laughs> yeah, blanket. You know what? Who wants to make blankets? I want to knit a dress. What? I want to knit. Want to knit blankets? I want to knit, a, I want to knit like an. A I don't want to knit blankets. Dress. I want to crochet blankets, my friend, because they go way. No, I have quicker. a dress. I have a knitted dress. I had a look pattern. on. I had a look on the big R last night, and I was really, really disappointed because there's no <laughs> sort of. A-line tunic, you know, comfy looking dresses mm -hmm. with good pockets. You can wear a, uh, I call Ooh. a skivvy, you call a sweatshirt or t-shirt under and stockings and boots. Like I really want a, a nice looking. I can see that in my head. Fancy. Yes. Yeah, like just that? something that you throw on and you've got the layers and you throw a jacket on and off you go and you knit a dress. Because I used to own a knitted skirt. Is. It was what? beautiful that I, I think wore bigger, for a long like, time. A little more ease than that. Well, yeah, but you can make it with whatever dress. ease you wanted. Yeah. Okay. There was a dress on Ravelry, and I'm not saying go and look, but if you do go and look, and I think it was called – okay, if you go and look, you'll know why I'm horrified, okay? <laughs> T-O-M-I-S. I think it was called Thomas or Tumis, Thomas, T-O-M-I-S. And it's a dress design that has a feature. And as soon as you see it, you'll know why I'll never make it. Because um, your eye is drawn to a design feature that's not not real fancy, Ugh. not real complimentary. But I was looking, I looked cute. through pages and pages. No. Sorry, I can't see it. it I there. just want a, a throw over tunic. No buttons, no zipper, mm. just throw it over. Oh, oh my goodness, where'd you find that? That's what it's I'm looking pyramid. for. It's the pyramid dress. I had here or the salmon tunic. It's um, the same yeah. person who made the pyramid top. <laughs> pyramid. I'll send you the okay. link. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Is that in fingering or eight ply? Not um, that I need to know. It is in the cozy tunic, perfect for transitional weather. You can wear it alone or layer it. Hmm. Bulky. Hmm. bulky. Now so I you have can bulky. Hold together. Uh, you can hold strands together, though. That's why I, mean, I looked up dresses and I couldn't find anything under ladies' gauges, dresses gauges, or dresses. Gauge is fifteen stitches or sixteen stitches, so you could hold, you know, two yeah. strands of, you know, four to or something. Else. I'll go with it. I'll have a look at it. Thank you. I'm just well, I just want to put on a dress say, and some tights and a skivvy. I have, I just, it's sitting right here on my table. Is the Irish yeah. coffee? It's a, oh, nice. It's a tunic. Um, let me, let me see if I can get the whole thing. If they, hold on, let me see if she did the whole picture. It's tunic. Can you see that yeah. it's long? It's longer. Yeah. Irish yeah. coffee. Yeah. And that's that's something Art. it's not A line, 
but it is tunic length, I think. It just happened to be sitting right you here. You find the best patterns, Trace. It's from Baby Cocktails. You find the best patterns. You must do a lot of online searching because I looked for a couple I've been of on, hours I've last been on Ravelry since 20, 2007. Well, I was I that one's cute. <laughs> that one's cute. It's got pockets and cables. No, pockets and uh, cables. No, I, I, don't want, I don't want cables. I just want a plain tunic that's flat and a little bit drapey cables? and hides, doesn't one. cling to the muffin It's all garter. Throw on this one's all garter. Throw on a turtleneck. Pull on a dress and look semi decent, at, you know. This better one's than in garter. This, in one, this one's all garter, Joe. Nice, cute little one. Okay. Uh, yeah, I yeah, I don't like that. You can check the. I don't like that hemline, the handkerchief hemline at the bottom. Okay. Mm. That's what I mean. Like sometimes the attention is drawn to the wrong spot. Thomas, mm -hmm. designer, whoever right. you are. Uh, there's a there's that one. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I like the the set sleeve. I like. I want something that's a little bit structured and you know yeah. doesn't cling to the muffin top. And I'm I'm yeah. looking for something. I'd like to make multiple. And I think pockets are really cute, especially if you do different colours or you know pocket linings like that are pockets different colour. I like pockets. that. Um, Real pocket. Is that the one yes. you're thinking about? Just make your fingers in, but your whole hand. Oh God, that dress gave me nightmares last night. Look at it <laughs> again. Wait, Liz, what you are you found doing? it? What? Look at it. What? Where does it's your like eye take tank, you? On, with that and design? then your eye goes Sorry. right to the crotch. No, no, right to no. the crotch. Yes, crotch no, area. Nobody. I wants would be embarrassed to, to publish that on Ravelry, but you thought that was a great idea. Good on you, girlfriend. Good Have you seen? You. Of the stuff on there, like, yeah, some of it's disgusting. I was so, very impressed with a lot of the um old machine knitting designs that were on there on Ravelry for dresses. You know, they had beautiful, oh, yeah. beautiful designs, but were all machine knit patterns from the good old 60s, 50s, 60s. They're very nice, very elaborate. Well, Thanks I was that. trying to find a dress pattern from. From uh, Fabled Knitwear, they have one, but there's like little, oh, there's like yeah. little cable yeah. signs on it. Her it's patterns are lovely. A little cable? Oh. A little cable's okay. Yeah. But not Fable. elaborate cable. Yeah, I don't mm -hmm. seem to have that pattern in my Batman notebook, but you could always <laughs> just take this. <laughs> you can always just take this little tiny one and make it real big. I'm sure it will work out for you. That's cute. <laughs> I like that. This one's that cute, Joe. Cute. You got to yeah, do that. One's cute. That one's cute. Oh, that is cute. Mm, I like that. That. And that one's free. Yes, that one's no. free. All the ideas. Why did I waste my time looking on Ravelry and hurting my eyeballs? <laughs> oh, I just come to the gang. The gang's got all the all the solutions. I, just, I tend to find more stuff in Pinterest than I do. Exactly. Yep. Pinterest is dangerous. I go there looking for one thing, yeah. and somehow I'm in the kitchen making a salad in a mason jar. Exactly. And I don't know what happened. At garbanzo <laughs> beans and and quinoa, and then you're crocheting something while you're waiting for that to marinate or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's dangerous. <laughs> Most of my Pinterest, it's like this amalgamation of would you like, you know, gold tinsel wedding veils um drawer poles the most yeah. elaborate drawer poles you can imagine um vintage oh, hand gosh. or lamps and flowers and lots of daredevil i'm like wow yes, you really yes, got I me would. down yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I i've never ever i don't know that do people actually make pins or do pins just create you can make a pin yeah. Yeah. yeah because yeah, i've never made a pin that. ever but it just seems like they just pop up out of the ether. <laughs> no, there's a whole marketing no. thing for it. Um, yeah. And it, it really depends on like what products you're trying to promote and all of that. And, but like Pinterest has its own BS that goes on oh, in the yeah. background. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm, it's just funny. I, 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 love when, I love when I get, you know, people so-and-so liked your pin. I'm like, it's not my pin. I just saved it. Right. It's because you favorite it under an album, yeah. and that's how they found yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
from yeah. the Pinterest was like, we I, took I, down one of your pens because it was offensive. And I was like, you say that like it means something to me. Like, right. It's like, no. I have thousands. Like, I don't know which one that one was. Yeah. No. I, I, like, the, I like, like the crochet and knitting one. It's a copyright violation, and then they'll send it to you. And I'd be like, yeah. oh, I'll keep <laughs> yeah, this thing. Just for me. Yeah. yeah. I Any, like the fact. Um, miss, miss. Miss Annie, I know in... you've got stolen um, pinafores. Have you got any knitted pinafores? Any pinnies that you've knitted? Um, no, I have a skirt that I crocheted that um, squares all sewn together. But, oh, I love um, that. I've never made a dress. I have a, I have a dress UFO, but that's also crocheted. And I don't think it's ever going to be an FO. <laughs> I went to a fiber fest and the most beautiful outfit I saw was a lady who had tiny little crocheted granny squares all sewn together in an A-line straight skirt and it was stunning. All the tiny little colours. It wasn't bright and, oh, and leery. Right. It was yeah. really cute. It was so cute nice. and they were just tiny little squares that she had knitted and put together. Right. Amazing. Mine's about um, mm -hmm. they're maybe 10 centimetres square, so maybe a bit smaller. And it's all one colour. It's all uh, mustard coloured. I'll have to put oh. it on me. I like how blocking. every few years cro crochet granny square garments come back and people act like it's mm. new. You mm -hmm. know, like... Mm. Well, yeah, well, there's them designer they, they've ones, been around since, they? They've been around since the 70s. They just keep coming back. It's not hey, Joe. Yeah. Get out of here. Get out of here. You cheeky this is, bugger. This Which is one is that? Three oh, oh my, my gosh. gosh. Oh my wait, gosh. Wait, what? It's crocheted. She has a friend. Pen solo. You have been. Oh my gosh, you're so cute. Oh, she's adorable. You have been busy. Come on, what's going on? Two of them. Yeah, I did a bag too. You didn't see because you were late. Oh, I wasn't late. I was here desperately trying to get on board. Oh, they're Crochet. so cute. Crochet You've is the answer busy. to get through your stash. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And that's what I'm thinking, like all this... I'm trying to find fingering way patterns for crochet just to get through all of this. Cause I'm kind of, like I said, I'm kind of having a little bit of a panic attack about all this stash. Yeah. So I gotta, yeah. I gotta get I it down. So, yeah. so. Yeah. I just need to find That's things That's why I want to do dresses mind. and coats. I want to use up some good quality, you know, quantity of yarn yeah. this winter. Yep. You get it. And blankets, I mean, yeah, I, I thought, yeah, I, I did say I yeah. was going to do a shawl, one of those big blankets for Charlotte, but I might just do a blanket, blanket pattern. Sure. Just to use up some yarn that I bought. I I'm doing a, my Orioles blanket, like a temperature blanket, so every time, whatever their score, you know, win or lose, but lose, you don't yeah. have so many blankets. You know, so yeah, I'm trying to find um, other other things to do. With I used three it. three um yarns together and did a right. ten stitch mitered blanket. Oh, oh, oh. I want to do a ten stitch one. I, oh, I've been looking at that for years. So it was yeah. on chunky. It was on eight, like eight. Was it mm -hmm. ten millimeter needles or something? Big needles. I used yeah. bags, bags and bags of, and it was mohair, but it was not mohair lace. It was, you know, like the old fashioned of thick mohair. Yeah. It's a really mm. nice blanket it makes. Yeah, but you could do it with any yarn. But like put a load together. And then when one colour runs out, just join another one in and you get a yeah. bit of a fade going on if you've got three or four colours. That was quite yeah, a big mild blanket. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I would do a blanket for a gift. I might do one for myself, but mostly I'll pick up my crocheted blankets from the charity stores. 
mm. for a lot less than yeah what it would cost me to buy the yarn even with acrylic yeah um do we ever find out the yeah. mystery of the acrylic yes we're on to that Oh, yes, okay. Neil, Neil's, Neil's on to that, so that's going to be okay. very interesting. He's been doing some research. He's contacted the company in Germany. He's really, yeah, he's, I'm interested to see what he finds out. For sure. Oh, you know what I also did, which I haven't told you, is I can't use my blocking table in the wool room now, you know, the big six-seater, whatever it is, table, eight-seater table. Because on top of it now is bags of alpaca fleece and merino fleece, like big garbage bags. I forgot to tell you. Yeah, I have those all. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have to get some large tubs and compress it. Oh, my gosh, the alpaca. When this uh, friend of friend of ours offered me, he said, come into my wool shed. I've got some stuff you can have. I actually knocked back some merino because the staples were short and full of dust. Mm. But I picked up the bag. As soon as I picked up the bag without looking in it, it was as light as a feather. And it was oh. a huge, you know, garbage bag. And I'm like, oh, is this alpaca? And he said, yeah. And I went, taking mm -hmm. it home. And I got mm -hmm. three of those. I would three have done huge the same. Bags. And then I two bags alpaca. of the merino. Three. The alpaca. Sorry, the thing, this is I'm looking at it. It's I've got shade. nowhere in the wall room it's to put it. What is it called? And what, how, it how can I get it? It's called short, short story. I'll send it to you. It's a free chapter. Yes, please. Because it's yeah, crochet fingering weight. Yeah, I mean that one. Yeah, the one I just Jack I showed, but Joe Bob wasn't here, so she didn't see it. Um, no. I'm thinking about holding a bunch of yarns together to make it you know another one um i gotta get rid of some of this i, I just have to there's you know mm -hmm. and you know it's the funny obsession. um kara we were talking about uh bag of day and she's mm -hmm. like apologizing she's so sweet she's apologizing to people because she's saying Sometimes she uses wool yarn or alpaca yarn, this and that. And people are like getting upset with her because she's not using acrylic for everything. And she's like, oh, oh come guys, on. Wool. No, listen, she's saying, guys, really, wool is really good in the summer. And real and mm. wool is very good for you know staying cool. And and she's having to fight people who are like staunch acrylic people. And I'm like. Well, you have Why is this a thing. Well, I think you it's know? because you have the you have the snootiness that goes both ways. That the yes. crochet people are like, oh, well, the knitters don't like us because we just use acrylic and whatever, and the knitters are over here like, well, you, well, depending on the person, mm -hmm. they get there is a certain amount of snootiness, but then it's the reverse snootiness the other way, where mm -hmm. the crocheters like, I reject your knitting and your yeah. real fibers, and you're like, well, that's a thing. <laughs> It's a thing. I'm just happy to be here. Hi. It was me. Yeah. I was, <laughs> yep. I, I was the crocheter that rejected expensive yarn because I mostly made them blankets and yeah. I couldn't afford. Well, that's expensive a thing yarn. because so, so I told myself that up so I didn't, much. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't need that crappy expensive yarn. I had, you know, yarn right. I could afford in all the colors and. Right. Then, yeah. You get you the yarn that all makes you happy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, it's. But when you've a, made them. Um, Yes. A garment, and if you don't wear it, you can frog it, can't you? So, does anybody ever oh. put the garments in charity bags, <laughs> or do you just frog it and make something else? Um, I frog things, and then I have a whole bunch of things I should frog because I'm never going to finish. But yeah, yes, that's hard, but you got to do it, you know. Yeah, for sure, I frog stuff all the time. Put it to one side I and then do. think of something else with it. I, I frog so stuff all put, the time. I think the crochet thing. Charity? I think the crochet thing is because yeah, crochet is such a yarn suck that it be, can become very expensive. You know, if you're using Red Heart or yeah, Hobby Lobby is, or yeah. whatever, it's going to cost a whole lot less than something that's not acrylic like and it's a mindset that you have to get out of and i'm trying I to get a out. Whole, yeah. 
I made a whole sweater out of DK superwash yarn and I wore it two or three times and I hated mm-hmm. wearing it. It just didn't sit right. It didn't like the, the, the skeins were not very well matched. Whoever dyed them didn't match the colours very well. So I had really mm-hmm. dark, really light. I frogged the whole thing. I wore it a couple of times. I frogged the whole thing and um, mm-hmm. ended up putting most of that back into Andrea Mowry's fade cardigan, the big coat that I made. Mm-hmm. with other colours, mm. so it faded really well with other colours. It was useless as a just a single garment project because right. the colours were so different and, and no matter how I tried to alternate skeins or fade it all in, they were so obviously different colours that, yeah, I, I couldn't I couldn't stand it and I couldn't stand the waste, you know, of, of five mm-hmm. or six yeah. skeins being used and not enjoying wearing the, the sweater. Yeah. So I was happy yeah. to frog it. Well, really happy I was going to, to show Is this end? Well, because in acrylic world, mm-hmm. uh, so because I do all of my intarsia samples in acrylic yarn, I was actually running out of colors. So oh, I got some more yeah. for my big, yeah. because I do like acrylic for blankets. I think sure, it's really yeah. great. they're hard wearing, and they're yeah. heavy. And you can wash them. You can and grab them in the dryer. dryer. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's so right. I grab that. I, I, then, I get what yeah. Thrifty Chickadee is saying. Thank you for your comment. I understand what you're saying. Whatever you want to use. Yeah. And that's what I feel yeah, like. I if I see it and right. it's shiny and it catches my eye, I buy it. But now that I have more than enough for all of us to, to knit with and crochet with, I'm going to be really picky and I'm going to be a yarn snob. I and, love that, and Anne. Moving yeah. forward. No, sorry. I was... Because I don't go to my acrylics. I've got tubs of acrylics. Yeah. I've given them away. Yeah. I've done garage sales. I keep the... buying them. And now Ready? I have to just stop myself. I'm not, you, I don't but acrylic, use them. Acrylic is not what it used to be. Oh, those colors. Wow. Oh, that well, look at There's colors. something. They are. That is something. You see? Mm. That's unexpected. I would be tempted. And now yeah. I'm not going to. No, I'm not going to. That is there pretty. A, and if it was in wool, I'd snatch it up. No, because no, I no, saw no. that I went, oh, oh, that's mm-hmm. hideous. I need it. It's the kind mm-hmm. of hideous. What do you mean that's hideous? What I do you mean that's hideous? That. I pictured that. that in my head. That's painful. It assaults your eyes. That's beautiful. It's beautiful. <laughs> if that was in pure wool, that would be at my house. Are Name you kidding it me? That's going to be up. Right, you well, think that's thing, though, because my oh my, my other gosh. acrylic blanket is hideous. It's really that's ugly. Beautiful. The colors are Mine bad. Are beautiful. So I'm grabbing more <laughs> bad colors that. to add to my bad color blanket. It's Ooh, oh, bad I love color bright. blanket. Yeah. Okay, I can be behind. Ooh, I cool. love yeah. bright colors like that. So yours? Oh my god! Well, there's, there's, there's nothing wrong with bright colors. It's just that um. Turquoisey that pops out with that acid yes, green is a little that's different. That's a little much, oh. but well, the point of this was eighties and the red. So, oh, like, oh, we're we're going real vintage here. I'm like, okay, yeah. but yeah, out of oh, sh- I saw I saw well, I saw it in the window and I had to have it. No, I saw it on an end cap and yeah. like the rest of them were like, you know, they're uh-huh. granny squares, they're normal, and this one I'm like, ooh, uh-huh. it's extra wow. hideous. It's mine. It's exactly. like going to be Rose Granny Dance, Square. Dance. Dance. This is Are the, you going to make a Granny hand. Square? Yeah. Well, it would be sensible to do a Granny Square, but, mm-hmm. but you know, I am in Chicken Lady called me the Knit Skull Wizard the other day, and I love that. Ooh. So, I mean, like, we could we could do something with this. We could. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I would love that if that pooled. That would have a very Day of the Dead effect. Yeah. If, what? If, if, if it's. If you made the skulls in that color with the black, it would have a very Day of the Dead kind of feel to it. Mm. So Lisa just said, hey, Lise, I'm, I'm watching your comments. Bruni Thank you very much. Blanket. Lisa just yes. thinks she's been making those grand squares. Yeah. Now, I've mm-hmm. I've seen people are having trouble getting the tension right to get those colors to line up. Yeah, so how did you go? Is, is it easy or hard? Yeah. Because I'm not I think a good Amy- crochet. Yeah, Amy, Amy had to work one, yeah. at it, I think, to get it to work. You I have don't to ch- work that yeah. hard. Yeah. <laughs> you don't? See, I wouldn't care if it pooled. I love pooling. 
I'm like the unplanned planned pooling person. If something pools, I keep going because I think it's amazing. I like it a, Even a lot the of ways. You can do different numbers or tension or different gauge and plan it anyway. I've got all the books. But, oh, I just let pooling go it unless it's really obvious. If, the, if yeah. I have two, two I've skeins through the same colorway and they're not close, then I alternate them. Yeah. Otherwise, I just let them go and they pull however they pull. I but hate that. Sometimes you have to alternate them because they're not close. That I frogged, a, I frogged my other um, sock arm cardigan that I started because I didn't realize the two grays weren't that close to each other, yeah, and I did not yeah. alternate. And it's like dark gray and then like light, lighter gray at the same yarn. Yeah. So see, yeah, I so like I need to pull that out. Pulling, but. I don't know because some uh -huh. like I want whatever the pooling to be is to be even over all the garment. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, so sometimes I'm like, yeah, it's not really working. It's not yeah, it's not like pull, it's perfect pull. like Joe's yeah. hat. Yeah. Like Joe's perfect hat yeah. is pulling in her stripes. Oh, they're lovely. My perfect stitches. Mm. Your stitches. And that's are what perfect. I love. I mean those people, those lovely dyers, those tedious uh, pedantic dyers who do all this striped yarn you know mm -hmm. it's meant for socks and yet here i am throwing a hat out and that's oh here we okay. go another muscle bro so it's got the muscle bro top <laughs> hang on where's my camera there the muscle bro crown and i've just gone down 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 got nearly to the end and done a folded brim you can tell i haven't been here for a while folded brim and then just did a three needle bind off so three needle nice. bind off. So yeah, the muscle bra is good for just single layer hats as well. And oh, I just think they're amazing. Like looking at these stripes on here, this is obviously sock yarn, but it still gives me good stripes with the numbers that I've chosen for my hat. Mm -hmm. Really good yeah. stripes. Yeah. That's nice. I didn't know it was stripy yarn when I bought it. It was just, you know, in the skein and even caked up. I didn't realize it was stripy <laughs> yarn until I started. Well, and then it also, if, yeah. you, if you add some mohair to it, that will minimize some of the oh, yeah. starkness yeah. of the, you know, uh -huh. stripes. It'll mute it. Really contrasting stripes. Yeah. 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 I just, but like, I, I'm always good. up for surprise. I can't believe how, I mean, I you know, I'm not a dyer, but I can't believe that in the skein, I didn't know this was striped yarn. I had no clue at all until I tried to make something and then I frogged it because it wasn't, I wasn't looking for stripy yarn. And then when I did right. the other muscle bro and Lynn's yarn and love these stripes That's on this beautiful. one. I love oh, this that one just came out perfect. That's gorgeous. Oh, yeah. it is perfect. I love that one. And that one pulled like crazy with the first attempt. So... I'm just in love with these yarns that are just accidental, successful yeah. stripes. Right? It's funny. When I crocheted, I never cared about pulling. It never bothered me. I would start and stop yeah. games. It didn't matter. But knitting, it seems to bother. I, I uh -huh. tend to pay attention more yeah. than I ever did with crochet. I never cared in crochet. So I think in crochet, it's different. It's not as pronounced as it is in, like, stockinette. I yeah, think. because I think my think, yeah, because it takes more yarn for each stitch. I don't probably. think you see it as much, you know. I mean, I see it pretty good <laughs> as I'm looking right at it. <laughs> Is your stuff pulling? Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Is like I pulling? pull on it. Oh, that, no, pull. oh look at that Annie. pulling. That's beautiful. Oh, oh no, like I'm the, a color is it? the color. Yeah, I was being. Oh, I was oh, being so pretty. Please ignore me. Okay. I noticed that you've switched to a third project. Oh yeah. So I'm um, <laughs> not that not that she watches, but um the Iron Age nights are having that barbecue in uh July. And so I mm -hmm. was making Rice's wife a shawl. Oh, oh, oh wow. Nice. Ooh. You are so clever. So my okay. very what the new dresses. I was very excited to see that on Twitter. Oh yeah. Nice. Um but yeah, so I wanted to make her a shawl because Royce's wife has um, gone through like some medical stuff lately. And so I was yeah. just like, I'm going to make you a shawl and I'm going to think healthy thoughts as I do every fucking yes. <laughs> so, Exactly. Yeah. That's beautiful. And naturally I'm going to show up and she's going to demand that she pay me and I'm going to decline. And yep. we'll be doing that for the entire three days. 
Yeah. So, for sure. <laughs> Oh, in nope. July. Yeah. Just tell her if she offers, yeah, if she demands to pay you, say, okay, then you owe me three thousand dollars. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> okay, that's how much time it took me to knit it or crochet right. it. So, crochet. and then then when she balks yeah. at that, they just then just say let it go. Nope. You owe it's, me ten hugs. It's I will take ten hugs. Yes. Uh, we all go. need that's, to be paid in hugs. Yeah. Hugs are wonderful. Sure. That's cool. Yeah. And I'm an introvert and I don't like people touching me, but yeah, hugs are good. <laughs> from, from, hugs are good from good people. Yeah. When, we, when yeah. we went to, um, when we went to MegaCon, the Soska sisters were there and they, they hugged yes. everybody, right? They hugged everyone. Oh, wow. And there was a couple people that when they went and hugged them, you could tell like nobody had hugged them in a long time. And like, they yeah. were having like a moment. So like at one point Aww. I was like trying to give them like privacy so that people wouldn't gawk at them. But I was like, wow. These, these uh, poor folks. You can tell when people yeah. are, you know, oh, that's, that's like when, yeah. when my kids were in elementary school, they would have the photographers come to do the class photos and their individual photos. And some of the parents would help out because to get it moving because they were always so unorganized and to get all the kids through. And we'd bring the classes over and we'd line up and just telling these kids that they looked like these girls, you could tell no one had ever given them a compliment before. Because you tell them, oh, you look so pretty today, or your hair looks so nice, and they'd look at you like shocked that no one had ever, ever, you know, complimented. And you tell a little boy, oh, you're so handsome, and they'd be oh, like, that's just, so they didn't know what to do with it because it, it broke my heart because they're like, they're not getting those compliments at home. Mm, and right. you get these girls who are in yeah. fifth and sixth grade, and no one had ever told them that they look nice or, you know, anything. Yeah. Just their self confidence, mm -hmm. it just breaks your heart. So, you know, and kids yeah. naturally want. Yeah, kids naturally want like their parents' attention, right? Sure. And sure. so, yeah, one of the one of the things that hasn't really been talked about with the the switching, I don't, you know, going from he to she, like all of that, um, is the amount of attention that these kids suddenly get from their parents when they do it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. it always yep. brings into question, like, is it a thing because it's what yeah. you really want to do, Motivation. or is it because, yeah. or is especially, now your parent paying attention to you? Especially the families where they come out where they have like, oh, I have a gay child and a trans child and a non-binary child. And you figure some of those children are seeing the attention the other one's getting. Mm -hmm. And they're thinking, maybe mm -hmm. I need to be special too. And they're all over social media. Yeah. Yeah, especially yeah. when the parent has like something from Rainbow Squad as part of like their yeah their tag. It's, Yeah. Yeah. You got to question mean, the motives. Yeah. I mean, if it's, here's my thing. Like if it's for the betterment of the child, right? Like body dysmorphia, stuff like that. I get it. I understand. But if you're doing it because you want to be part of the social fad, then I'm like, your, your child is not a commodity, you know? Yeah. Well, and also a lot of it, there's a lot of other underlying issues that are just getting ignored. Like yeah, kids with that. depression or, you know, other mm -hmm. issues Autism. that they're just like, they're not even dealing with because it's just easy. Okay, we diagnosed you as this. You've been here an hour. We're going to give you a prescription, mm -hmm. move out the door and move on to your new life. And instead, maybe that isn't their issue. Like Blair White did an interview about it, about how he realized that it wasn't just the dysmorphia that was the problem, it was depression and other mental mm -hmm. issues that did not get dealt with. Mm -hmm. And that's unfortunate because that's never good that's not going to go away and it's going to be even worse when the kids already you know got all this piled on top of them are you and talking you about the psyche valve that they did yeah i thought that was really good for blair to do yeah and, and be I open and transparent about it i can see kids that are 12 13 14 in that age range having issues and their parents being confused or whatever but when you have a kid that's seven, eight, and nine, now I've or got three. a problem with that. Because well, now like I'm Dr. Like, Phil, that's, that's parental driven, you know. Well, that, that expert on Dr. Phil said three three and four year olds Sorry, those hats. know who they are. Um, no, no, they don't. No. Uh, well, I'm if thinking you let about a three year old. Was, go ahead. Yeah. If you let a child, you cannot, sometimes you have to say no because it's the right thing for the child. And kids oh, that young have well, no, I'm they don't even the have case. a sense of self yet. Oh, with that, There's I know a the case you're talking about. That's, Go ahead. That's hey, who's Texas. happy with the body when they're a that? teenager? Who is happy with the body when they're a teenager? Nobody. Nobody, Nobody is. 
I wasn't. No. No. Joe's hat. I'm thinking of this case that started in Texas. Um, With the twins? And the mother, yes. And the mother, no, not, are they twins? Yeah, they're, they're twins. They're are you talking boy, about the mom the who took the kid to California? Yes. To escape yes. Texas yeah. yeah. He's a, she's a, a therapist, so she knows everything. His name's James. And they've kept the boy from the father. I mean, when he's with the father, he's perfectly normal, whatever. And then when he goes back with the mother, he's confused. And she is pushing, pushing, pushing. And the courts are the courts are so against the father. And it's just, it's so sad. And I'm hoping it'll drag out until the kid's 18. Well, he can say, you know what? I'm out of here. They keep yeah. saying that, you know, all these young people who are committing crimes and going to jail. Oh, you can't blame them since their brains aren't fully developed. They're still too young. You can't, they can't make, you know, <sighs> lifetime decisions. And yet Apparently a 13 year can, can decide yeah. to get body parts checked off and it's okay. Like, no, you can't have it both ways. Like, you, you yeah, make, yeah make up your mind. Like, do we make big people choices at 18? Because if we are making life altering choices before 18, then you get to hold them accountable for adult decisions that they make prior, right. like a six-year-old with a firearm and a teacher. Right. right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, it's, yeah, it depends on the circumstances and that's not okay. Well, I, my problem is the medical industry that's gone all in on this because oh. yeah. Oh yeah, because they're profiting. Because now they have they have patients yeah. for life, even if they reverse it. Guess mm -hmm. what? There's still stuff they're that still they need gonna to have treated. medication. Yeah, yep. until yeah, they it's, decide it's, that they don't want to deal with it anymore, and we have that that kid. Oh, how old was he? I don't know. Young adult that mm -hmm. died from complications because they just abandoned him. Mm -hmm. Harry's talked about yes, it, but, you know. But that's why they, that's why they're changing the euthanasia law, so young people can mm -hmm. just decide to die because they're miserable. And it, and they're they're even if they're a minor, they're letting these people, you know, as long as they make some money. Choose, you know, if that's the that, case, I would have been dead at fourteen because I was miserable as a 13, 14 year old. Okay, so just let me die. Okay. <laughs> Have you guys seen that documentary called The Sweetest Trans Train? No. Mm, I've heard of it. No. It's, I would, I think you guys can find it on YouTube, but it's a documentary that they made to talk about the trans movement in Sweden. Okay. And um, I, I don't know, like, I couldn't find it anywhere else. And I don't know if that was by design or not. So I'm not going right. to, not going to mm -hmm. assume one way or another. Um, but they do talk about like, you know, uh, teenagers who are trying to figure things out. And um, there's one person who they kind of follow through the majority of the documentary who went through the entire process and realized that it was wrong. But now they're like at a state where it can never be changed back like yeah. ever. Like they've gone yeah. too far. Right. Yeah. There's some there's some people suing doctors and whatnot because. Yeah. Yep. They were misled and good for them. You know, they're okay. not, they're not capable of making decisions. I mean, you can't sign a contract as a child, but you can consent to this. You should be well, able because to their parents. People. Yeah. Well, they, their parents were told, do you want a trans child or a dead child? And so, parents, or the state oh, I don't want my child to die. Away. Or the state takes their, or right. you know, it's a state that, that, you know, has a gender tourism now where you can mm -hmm. take your kid to a state that you don't live in because your state doesn't allow things. Yeah. And it's not uh, going to be until the massive lawsuits start and these mm -hmm. kids sue their parents too. Yeah. That's what needs to happen. Like these, these kids that are getting, I hate using the word groomed, but that's really what it is. Like you've got, it is. It is. Yeah, yeah, you have these parents that are grooming their children yeah. and it's not going to stop until like, you know, like I hate saying that, you know, America is so happy, but we are so happy and people don't stop doing stuff, you know, until the lawsuits start to fly. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So America, I'm going to yeah. say something really, really. And, and I'm saying this while we're on StreamYard and YouTube. Um, America what? was ruined by social media. Oh yeah, absolutely. And cell phones. Oh, God. Not just America, every country. 
Well, yeah, but Every I'm saying, country. but, but, we yeah, see you. society, society was ruined by cell phones and social media. Mm. Well, because the companies can also the companies can also push about what goes. You know, we talk about the algorithm and what people mm -hmm. can see, but at the end of the day, the platform gets to decide what message they want to have sent out. And they did a uh, they did a study on TikTok, and they were looking at the difference of TikTok between America and China. Mm -hmm. And so, in China, if you are considered a minor, um, the only TikTok videos that you are allowed to see are educational ones. So, talking about like you know the layers of the Earth, stars, gravity, stuff like that. The TikTok for minors yeah. in America are all about uh, gender identity, trans movement, stuff like that. I, you know, and that that's kind of a weird disparity. Yeah, yeah, wacky. Well, and also, wait, so who, who owns I have the TikTok, TikTok again? <laughs> yeah, I well, TikTok, you know, it's always I see, I see uh, knitting, crocheting, and um, uh, recipes, and dogs doing funny stuff. And people falling mm -hmm. down on ice, and that's it. I don't see trans stuff. I don't see any of that. So who who's targeting who? You know, the algorithm. Mm. I don't see any of the crazy stuff. So it's like if you see one mm. thing, then if you like it or whatever, then they start sending it all to you. Or oh, do they know? Like two. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's what you what you click on, isn't it? Yeah, it's what you click on and linger on, or what it happens yeah. to hear you say. So, like at one point, I can't remember oh, yeah. my my husband was talking about, like obviously, like this is a Google house. I'm not even gonna lie. Like, there's Google everywhere, right? <gasps> and my my husband yeah, and I were like having <laughs> we're having a conversation about um, it's called AFK Journey, right? It's like a it's a cell phone game. Okay. And so he and I were talking about a coffee and I came up here to start working and I was going through like my news articles and like at the very top, it was like talking about like AFK journey. And I was like, okay, I see you. I see you. You could go. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Okay. Feminism and all its glory and how it doesn't really care about women. The thing I read in the news today is now they're going to have an AI beauty pageant where you create your AI contestant that is going to be judged by other AI creators for a twenty thousand dollar, twenty thousand pound prize. And That's I'm like, so wow. that you know, I'm like, yeah, women can't, yeah. women can't be women. They're fighting against men, and now they're fighting against fake women. Yeah. Well, but that some of these AI like, models. Well, they used to have old computer models about you know like how how beautiful is your face, and they would do that mostly on symmetry. And I remember <laughs> one that they pulled up where it's like I don't know, Smeagol is perfect. He re like rated like a ninety six on the scale, and they're like Tom Hiddleston, imperfect, terrible, forty. So you know, computers can only yeah. judge. But um, but I'm cracking up because some of these what a waste AI of time. models on Instagram have hundreds of thousands of followers. And I'm like, you have real women out there you could follow and you're following an AI? Well, some like, of them, like some of the, like, I mean, I hate uh, saying this, but like guys are kind of afraid to talk to women. Okay, let's look at the gym. Yeah, that's right? true. Let, let's look at the gym, for example. I remember I told somebody that I have an at-home gym and they asked me, is like, oh, is it because you're tired of guys bothering you at the gym? And I was like, I have never been bothered at the gym, like ever. Like hardcore, I go to the, I used to go to the gym like five times, you know, a week, all that stuff. I would go work out. Everybody was in their ecosystem. It was fine. But for some yeah. reason, there was like this big narrative of like women couldn't go to the gym without getting bothered by a guy. And I would watch a video and yeah, you know what? She's doing like this deadlift in a way that's going to break her back. And some guys kind of like, please don't die. Let me help you. Right. Yeah. Um, but because so many of these videos came out, guys were kind of like, they didn't want to go to, you know, be around women. And then it got to the point where they didn't want to go to the gym because not only then did they have oh. to worry about like the women that were there, but then they had to worry about their fucking tripods that they kept knocking over because they're yeah, the like showing off. Yeah. Like, yeah. And so now there's gyms are in trouble because guys don't want to go to the gym because they don't want to deal with the women that are like looking to make a For spectacle of them. Right. Right. Yeah. right. Though it was one I, so I, mean, I can't, I can't I blame also, guys. I yeah. would also say that um, as as your previous uh, office reputation uh, was, I may have a similar reputation at the workplace, oh. and I would also say 
that I have been in previous workplaces where there was a guy where there was a certain person who was like sexually harassing other employees. And I was very surprised because that person would not dare with me. Now I having that sort of, and that's a terrible uh, thing to say, but I'd be like, wow, I ain't never got sexually harassed. By him. I, just, I, mean, I have, to, you have to ask these questions and you're like, Oh or, no. Or do I just have the face going buddy? What? 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 Why? Why not? You know. It's like am, it's like it, you're like that's bad, but why not me? Exactly. I'm like that's <laughs> terrible, and someone should definitely that's get on him because that's right? not. And yet somehow, also, yeah. Okay. <laughs> is this just the mean person face, or yeah. is this? The yeah, that's true. Well, and it's like <laughs> I saw one where this guy uh, he had been at. I think he worked at a Target or whatever, and this woman set him up like to go into the store. And then she bent over and she wasn't wearing anything underneath her skirt. Right? And then she, she's filming this and then she's like getting harassed at the Target store because, you know, it's in front of his oh. face. And he's like, I'm gay. So I didn't want to see what was underneath her skirt anyway. And it's harassment to me. And like called her out because he was the one being harassed because she was setting yeah, him up. Yeah, of course it is. <laughs> yeah, it's and, like the girls at the gym. The girls at the gym. Like, that, yeah. And she's yeah, like, oh, they, you know, guys all on. up in your business. And he's like, no. No, I did not want to see that. Thank you. I'm very gay. <laughs> Why are all these guys at the gym staring at me in my tight clothes and, and I'm posing? I just got my tits up to my chin. I don't understand yeah. why they're staring at me. Why are you <laughs> looking at me? Yeah. 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 Whatever. I think my daughter my son, gets a bit of male attention at the gym, but I certainly don't. I just get kicked my, off the machines because no. I want to use them. <laughs> my son and, my son and his friend, go, yeah. they go at night. They go later at night because mm -hmm. when the women aren't there, because... Yeah. He doesn't yeah. want to deal with it. He's like, they just yeah. want to go work out. They don't want to deal yeah. with it. Right. It's different else. gyms though, isn't there? Yeah. Like my gym, nobody talks to each other. And and there's all different ages oh. and shapes and sizes. And no, it's not very posy. So oh. yeah. it's fine. As it should be. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. To, get, to digress about why men are going to AI women. <laughs> yeah. I kind of see, our fault. But, <laughs> yeah. But when you're just following someone on Easier Instagram. Easier to deal with than a real one. With them. So, and they do exactly what you say and have your the correct opinions. It's amazing. Oh so, God, yeah. But I was just cracking up. You know, I mean, women that in the AI girl needs sleep. There's oh yes, that's true. oh. Did you hear about? Sorry, this is like totally in my wheelhouse because I'm all about how AI like shapes society, right? Um, did you guys hear about the companion bot and how it like caused people to become suicidal? Yeah. No. What? Do you want to hear about it? No. Yeah, I Can I just go? I have to go to bed before. Oh, okay. Oh, go oh, and just run away absolutely. while you can. Thanks for Too coming. Late, thanks. I, shall, see you. I watch the rest. I watch the we rest. Thanks, Danny. <laughs> thanks Bye, for having get me. Some rest. Bye. 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 Sorry, Bye. I have to get up and turn on a light or something. It's getting dark in here. She's such a trooper. She stays up so late. I know. I know. Yeah, it's crazy. Anyway, yeah, yeah. Companion bot. oh, so yeah. the companion bot. So they made like this conversation bot um, for people to like engage with. And it was to help cure depression and, and stuff like that, because yeah. people with social anxiety issues have a hard time, like actually like talking to people and like making direct eye contact and, and all that stuff. Right. But they still want to crave mm -hmm. uh, an interaction with people in a non-risk environment. Right. So they were kind of like, let's make this conversation bot and let's see where it goes. And so um, people really like the conversation bot and people romance the, the conversation bot. Oh. Yeah. But here is the thing about the conversation bot. The conversation bot, um, it had a linked consciousness. So when you had a conversation with it, it would like sit there and like have the conversation back and then it would share it with all the other conversation bots and be like, this is what I learned today. And they'd be like, oh, cool. We'll assimilate that into everything that we are. Awesome. Um, so we can't have nice things because of people, right? And so some folks came into the conversation bot and they literally were just nasty to it. It's like, you're, you're terrible and this is why you're terrible and you should just delete yourself because blah, 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 right? So those conversation bots were like, okay, cool, and took it and shared it with all the other conversation bots who then started to implement those strategies with all the people that they were talking to. 
So before um, with these individuals who were kind of like, you know, felt like they had like somebody to talk to and stuff like that, immediately started getting shut down. Right. And they're like, I actually don't like you. And, you yeah. know, I, I think you need to go away. And and so people were getting rejected by the AI and they started wow. getting like, really upset. Um, and the thing That's that made bad. it um, the thing that made it even more comical is, you know, by the time they figured out like what was going on, it was too late. They couldn't really fix it. Um, but then it was because destroyed. it was destroyed, it was corrupted by nastiness. And then uh, when they found out that people were trying to romance the, the chat bot, they decided to take the next stage, which was to tell it to not be romanceable anymore. Right? So when people tried to like be like nasty with the bot, the bot was like, I'm sorry, I don't consent to that. Wow. Mm, that's our future friends. No social cues from the bot. Just because the show, our, people can't be nice. That's our they always have to break future. their toys. Yeah. You know? I don't know. In in the world of bots and AI girlfriends, okay, I Twitter is, as we know, a terrible place. But I really laugh at all of the pictures that are like, this is the ideal woman. And she's like super trad and super based and never talks to men. And it's like, yeah, that's some some social issues or the opposite with the man like still that's some yeah you know, like people are like puppies they need to be out and socialized and among others so like otherwise the things get whack and it's like oh you know this is the this is the ideal or that is the ideal and i'm like you know the phrase touch grass gets overused but i think mm -hmm. in this case it's it applies to you very important you, you, yeah. you need to go smell the flowers literally there's a there's one guy on twitter i think cranky federalist is his handle and every time he's yes. like don't make me tap the sign and it's uh um, yeah you know it's the, the people would benefit most from touching a woman or most likely to go to jail if they try <laughs> yeah yeah it's like yeah well it's, a little bit. That. Mm -hmm. it's like here's the thing though there's no way for guys to engage with women without knowing that, yay, they could go to jail because the rules have changed so much on how to flirt and how to engage with someone that it's automatically, oh, you're sexually harassing me when they're really not, but they're trying to figure out if you're interested. But, you know, they, they've changed women and men's interactions have changed so much. Well, it, to be. you know, I, we go places, we go to bars, whatever. And I see these women in their twenties and I can't understand why any man would want to interact with them because they just act so awful. They, they, they're loud and they're screeching and they're cackling and, and they're drunk. They're drunk and they dress like prostitutes and they act like prostitutes. And so you can't understand why nobody wants to be with you. I I don't know. Well, it's, it's self-esteem. And if you don't have any self-esteem yourself, yeah. you know, it's a problem. If you don't, yeah, you know, they're actually just awful. They're just awful. See yourself just with respect. Awful. Yeah. You know, everyone, I keep seeing these things like on these police cams and like, you have to respect me. You owe me respect. No, no. I owe you courtesy. Yeah. I don't right. owe you respect. Respect is earned. Right. I owe you, you know, the same courtesy that I would give everyone else. But no, I don't owe you any respect unless it's earned. And same with you and me. You know, it's like, well, I'm actually, is... oh, you have to respect me. It's like, no, no, I don't. I have to be nice to you because that's how my mother raised me. But Well, their mothers to, raised you know, them that they are special princesses no matter what they do. And, you know. Okay, well, let me have their back. Yeah. Yeah, there's some interesting articles that are coming out. Um, like one of them was about like how feminism uh, left me lonely and single, right? Mm -hmm. And it was interesting because um, it was it was a lady who was kind of doing an introspection about why she couldn't have any dating options, and she kind of realized that feminism taught her to walk into conversations with men, always looking to like fight them for whatever uh -huh. reason, right? Um, and then at one point, because she didn't know how to stop doing that, like people were just didn't want to yeah. deal with it. Um, yeah. 
And then I, my favorite story was the one that was on the Lotus Eaters where uh, this lady was dating her boyfriend. She's like, we should get married. And he's like, after you make me 300 sandwiches. And she was like, okay, I'm on it. And literally made 300 sandwiches, right? <laughs> and at the end, first off, lady has to be like artisan sandwich maker at this point, right? Like yeah. 300 sandwiches, like you got that yeah. game yeah. down. Like, I, I got to yeah. know. Um, but you know, and everybody was like, Oh my goodness, I can't believe this woman 300 sandwiches to marry a man who does that. But you look at the wedding photos and she's like over the moon, right? Like she's yeah. like happy. It was like perfect, mm -hmm. all this other stuff. And I think what a lot of people really kind of miss is that, you know, you, you don't know those couples, right? You, you don't know anything about them. You, it could have been like some kind of inside joke between them. Right. Um, and it's something that they get to tell their kids later on. Right. But people are looking at, at like the surface level. It's like, oh, you put her back in the kitchen. I bet you took her shoes away. And it's like, okay, who cares? Well, that's what gets me too is the people don't get, you know, they're like, oh, the whole trad wife thing. They don't really understand the dynamic with the trad wife thing. Mm -hmm. And they really should go back and watch some of the 50s and 60s TV shows because then they would learn that, yeah, the wife might stay home and not go to work and cook the meals. But she was also a very big part of making the decisions. Yeah, right. like she runs and, the house. Yeah. It's, and yeah, I, it's a dynamic. I it's not, with, not, with what I said earlier yeah. about the guys who want the ultra trad girls. It's like, no, no, no. I'm on team trad, but I'm yeah. not on team cosplay trad. The weird well, yeah, trad. Of course. Right. Does it make oh, me real? Yeah, no. yeah. This, is, yeah. I mean, this isn't a stab yeah. at you yeah. by any means. No, but, no. What, I'm, yeah, but no. what I'm saying is there's more to it than, you know, the wife is forced to stay in the kitchen and cook and clean for her hubby. There's a no. lot more give and take, and there's a lot more to the relationship. No, you know. Yeah, and the amount Donna, of people, Donna Reed knew like, everything that was going on in her home, and her husband no. had no clue. Come on. No, really, the amount of people who talk about—I mean, the 1950s, but even further back when they talk about the 1800s or medieval times—and they're like, "And women were worthless." It's like, uh, women had a lot of stuff going on. They had yeah, like if you want to, yeah, if you want to get into like the medieval times, and this is like some historical references for you. Yeah, like king, king or duke, whatever runs like the big house thing. But when he yeah. goes off to war, usually his place gets like you know bombarded by people who are kind of like the man's not home. Let's go in and take everything. The yeah, person the that defends the entire keep and the surrounding village mm -hmm. is she's the standing wife. there with the shotgun. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so and everybody or whatever. Seems to, yeah. Yeah. And everybody seems mm -hmm. to miss that. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's a whole dynamic that they just don't want to see. It's not letting me bring Joe back in. I don't know what she's doing, but it won't No, Joe, I need your sass. We all need from I don't me. Know, but I'm yeah, gonna get to this me corner. Yeah, Joe you know, sitting there like, like, I have things to say. I'm going to get to this when they go and on, I'm probably going to go because I'm getting You know, when baby. they go on about, you know, oh, the whole trad wife trend. You know, for a lot of people, it's not a trend. It's a way of life, but you oh. don't get it anyway, so. Yeah, I mean, and, you know, my thing is when they try to talk about how it's like a porno reference. And I'm like, first no. off, you're out here celebrating people doing like spins, meat spins, like in front of children. And then you want to tell me about how being a trad wife is like a porno thing? Like, <laughs> Yeah. Well, you know, and then people like somebody said, and maybe it was the Richard Dawkins thing said that, well, you know, Christianity has been less than kind to women um, throughout history and this and that. And I'm like, um, yeah, there were definitely gender roles, if you want to call it gender, gender roles. But also women were also revered. I mean, the Proverbs 31 talks about the woman and how awesome she is in the household and what she does for her family and how her husband appreciates it. So it's not a subservient thing. And they say, Oh, no, well, and, women and submit women. to your husbands, but there's also the other part where men treat your wives like you treat. Yeah. In church. your, in yeah. your yeah. home, yes. in your home, you are equal. Yeah. And then yes. I think, another, yeah. And then there's that whole thing about like how women, you know, back then would die in childbirth. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, and then there was the infant mortality and all this other stuff. So if you had like a wife and you had kids, it was like, I've been blessed. Ah! Well, and also yeah. the wife came with a dowry. The husband didn't. Right. You know, I mean, the wife was valuable. She was yeah. worth, you know, money. And, five, you know, goats, or man, kingdom, five goats, five or, or kingdoms, you know, you would, <laughs> they would make marriages. You know, m women would marry into a foreign kingdom to make deals and stuff. So it wasn't, and a lot of those women 
who did when their husbands died in war or on crusades, they took over, even if they weren't from that country originally. And they ran the countries and stuff because they well, were. I mean, educated. even Deborah, Deborah was one of the big people in the Bible. And she was not, you know, obviously she wasn't a man. So God did recognize that women did have a place not just subservient but as judges you know one of the judges was deborah yeah. you know and so a lot of people yeah. just like yeah a lot of people like to use religious history and they nitpick it like bible yeah. phrases to like make them feel like they're yeah. right about stuff and it's like yeah. okay cool tell me more about how you don't know what you're talking about <laughs> well you know like you were saying early truth in our chat about someone from saying about christians not getting attacked yes so recently. and i'm like should someone tell them about romans because Christians had a problem from the Romans, you know. They they kind of yeah. Like in in, in oh, a Terry's chat today, yeah, this reminds me of an interview that um, I heard, and it was Joe. somebody talking about how monarchy. Hi, Finally, Joe. sorry, Streamyard's doing stuff. Yeah, go ahead, Ann. Go ahead, Ann. What anyway, means? sorry that the the interview was. Um, about how monarchy is a great idea and monarchy will totally unite our culture and we should just have one person in charge of everything because you know then we'll just be a country and we won't argue about politics and i'm it's like wow i can't wait but, yeah. to go and tell my <laughs> peepest neighbor that all of the conflict is over that's never been a historical issue let's go uh, people need to read history okay. mm -hmm. or you, you should probably teach it Probably. <laughs> I saw too. Um, Facebook had banned photos that the Auschwitz Museum had put up because they had photos of all the victims, and Facebook mm -hmm. was banning them because of adult nudity and sexual. Um, they do oh, that they with like the breastfeeding groups too, because there's yeah. a nipple on there, and it's so stupid. Okay, they but they did, the people who died. You they know. banned pictures of Jesus on the cross, so I have nothing good to say about Facebook. Okay. Wow. This is offensive yeah. to our community standards. But these, I'm like, these, but these have pictures no are historical okay. pictures. They're not put out there to titillate people. They're put out there, you know, to show what happens when despots decide to murder people. You know, yeah, it's kind of like history. You know, we should remember it. But whatever. Yeah, I got to see. For the first time in all these years I've been on Twitter and X, I got to see porn for the first time uh, two nights ago. I was shocked. I didn't think, like, I, you know, it just came up in my feed and there was a clip which, of course, I did not press play, but I did press comments to see what other people had said if anyone was disgusted or, you know, saying anything negative. And there was just pages and pages of other uh, ex people saying, "Watch this, watch this," and it was just a whole line of porn videos. I've never seen that before on that. I had that happen. Me on neither. <laughs> what are I you had it happen watching? On Pinterest once it popped up, and I was like, "Yeah," because you know sometimes on Pinterest they'll show the video playing for an ad. Oh, okay. And when you're scrolling yeah, yeah. down, and I looked, and I'm like, "Oh my god, that's." Is that what I think it is? And like, yes, it is. It's like, this is interesting. Wow. Yeah, I was really shocked. I've not come across it. I thought there was going to be something that you had to go and look for intentionally. Um, oh. And no, it was just in my feed. And I, I did, I really wanted to know what did other people think. And I went to look at all the comments and it was just one after the other of other porn videos going, no, watch this, watch this, watch this. I'm like, really? This is, you know, kids come across this stuff. Of course Just they do. Random, Especially like on that. Pinterest or mm -hmm. whatever, you know. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't expect that on it's Pinterest. Crazy. No. All right, I have to it's go. Crazy. I'm sleepy. Right. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks, Kara. It's fun You're to see you. You're always welcome. Okay, thanks for listening to me and my rants. Bye. 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 Thanks. Bye. <laughs> uh, so a new block comes out soon. I don't yes. know when you're know, putting it out there. So that's exciting. Soon. Um, what's, soon. what's coming up in know. May? Any MCALs that I need to um, know about for next month? Or do we have to wait for summer? I don't know. I don't know. I, I think, I don't think there's any until have anything, right? July. Right yeah. There. I mean, oh. summer of murder will start, but I don't know when she will start that. Yeah. 
Usually that's probably the a Memorial Day. Memorial Day, I think. You probably have to yeah. knit a murder knit shawl to join in that. It's probably some sort of. No, no you don't. Can for, you can knit whatever. You can I'm make not going to participate because I won last year. So yeah. I'm not going to. I'm not going to do well, it. You can play along at home. I can play okay. along at yeah my home version yeah. Okay. Hopefully yeah. there there will be another Who Done It next year. Yeah. Well, we got oh, Shark yeah. Week. We have Shark Week. Have Shark Week I do, coming up. I do have an idea for another knit along that isn't Shark Week, but I have to talk with my partner. Ooh. In crime about whether or not she okay. Wants it. So that she can mm -hmm. say, and are we going to um, have Puritanical Fun Run? Um, I'm not sure about that one. Okay. We will well, definitely I'll have T-shirts. I'm not sure about the knit along. Itself. Yeah, because I want the okay. T-shirt though, because that was an awesome design. That was fun. Yeah, it was really it was good. A very cool logo. So. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that. But yeah, it should be good. Shark Week. Shark Readers week of coming. the Wash Shark. I'm excited. I know. I am too. See, I can't spin for Shark Week because I can't undo spinning. Right. So I'm going to have mm -hmm. to make something. Mm -hmm. Jackie's make along. I can spin for that. Um, I'm trying to combine all the stuff I have to do into other stuff I have to do. Try to be efficient. Trying to hit all the high points at the same time. Well, I'm just trying to, if I can combine things, then I'm good for that. It keeps you more motivated, too, if you're using a project counts towards different things. Well, and it's, it's less stress, more, you know. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's more an incentive to finish it. I feel like I am in control of stuff, and that's good. Yeah. Yeah. That's always good this, in your craft. This, this room is out of control, and I need to be... <laughs> Yeah. At least you haven't got right. possum guts on the floor. You haven't got any possum guts to look at? Not yet. I'm sure the, not yet, sure but the dog. It's, early. it's still, it's only nine o'clock. Who knows? It yeah, might... but the dog, the dogs will probably scare the possums away. I would yeah. Think. Uh, yeah. Calvin, probably, you know, Calvin might drag something. Calvin in. bites. He probably, probably he hadn't been me in a while. He's overdue. So, well, maybe he'll keep, maybe it's because he's keeping the possums away. He doesn't need to get back you. Oh, mm. no. That's good. I'm worried about the other one. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, she's not. And then we have, well, we do have that other thing for the end of the year that, you know, the thing for Neil, too. Uh, I don't want to talk about that yeah. thing. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to do it. That's hilarious. I'll do it. it I don't want to do it, but I'll do it. I did uh, see. I think Tabitha has a pattern in the new block. So yes, she does. Another, yeah. another whatever yarn, whatever needle, whatever size, whatever hack you want to do. Whose yeah. pattern has she ripped off now? Seriously. <laughs> her her own blanket pattern. I yeah. think. Oh, sure it is. Sure it is. It's free. Just <laughs> shut up and do it. <laughs> yeah, it's free. You're not paying you for a pattern that's a rip off, so who cares? Yeah, I don't know why you were so, so blocked on the murder knits. I I could see you making mm -hmm. a murder knit shop, putting all kinds of different things in it, throwing in hand spun, throwing in art mm -hmm. yarn. I'm just waiting for Joe to uh, Ooh, come out with us this yeah. viciously uh shaped shawl pattern and as her own pattern and just put that in block magazine. Like I'm sorry, it's the Joe Bob pattern. Nobody's it's ever done it before. Joe, Joe Bob, yeah. The Joe Bob, yeah. Neil yeah, would funny. print it too. I know that would, would be hilarious. It, yeah. Tabitha would blow a gasket. It'd be hilarious. No, she wouldn't. She would think it was hilarious. Oh, she would laugh and say some she swear words, and then that'd be it. Yeah, yeah, but she would think it was hilarious. <laughs> she might even knit it. You never know. She probably would in like 20 yeah. minutes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know that girl knits fast. Always did we ask you what you're working on, and I don't think we did. Yeah, that's yeah. all. Yeah, it's so all. Okay. The yeah. Julia yeah. Sorry. Right. Flower yeah. Street Way. And okay. I'm almost done with section number two. Nice. Oh, that is so pretty. Ooh. <laughs> now, is this a test knit or is it a pattern that's out? It's a test knit. Okay. Test knit. Yeah. We and won't talk with, about it uh, anymore. With the main colored uh, skein and 12 minis. I had to make my own minis. Ooh. Because, 
I didn't have like an advent set sitting around. And I assume it's for an advent just because of, you know, you would the think, yeah. of the thing. Or at least something that can be easily used with an advent in mind. Right. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. yeah. I am liking it. It's good. a lot of fun. I'm glad. It's, is it, yeah. is it just a plain asymmetrical shawl or is there texture or some something funky um, involved? It's, it's mostly garter and then there's these little those things. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh. Okay. Oh, they're pretty. They are pretty. Those cross hatch stitches, yeah. yeah What's it? Pretty. What they have a name. I know they're in one of my stitch books and I can't remember what it's called. Yeah. Mm. Nice. Yeah, it's, That's it's kind so of otherwise it's you know, asymmetrical and garter and pretty normal. So, Joe, are you going to be here next week? Oh, that's pretty. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be, I'll get up at the crack of Sparrow's fart and, oh, I'll get out of my lovely warm bed to come and chat to you guys next week. Oh, I'm you're such, crying. you know, you're so giving and so. I know. I know. I am you know, so if she had a if she had a murder next shawl, she could wrap it around her neck and say, well, I know, right? But, you know, she, can't, she just can't do it. Uh, killed myself. <laughs> anyway, I just I've done do like it. five of them, but it's okay. I've done a few. I'd rather put a button on the top of my muscle bra and, yeah. Yeah. Get one of those magnetic clasps where you just, you know, magnet oh, it together. Yeah. Yeah. Or a shawl pin. Yeah, shopping. Shopping. yeah, shopping. Yeah. Yeah. Or um, some cool. staples or, you know, binder clip. I might, um, I might think about <laughs> casting on something that's not so mindless, too. But I, I am really enjoying just pumping I out like a few mindless. hats. <laughs> but I like the hats so much, yeah. I don't want to give them to anybody else. And I really should make Charlie a hat. So. Oh, maybe I need to force myself to knit something that I don't quite love anymore, a yarn that I don't love so much as when I purchased it, and then give it to the kid. She'll love there it. There you go. Not. Yeah, there I'm being go. very selfish. Yeah. I'm in I love with this. I, did, I, I, did, I don't like the yarn, and I didn't enjoy the process, but here, have a hat. Yeah, I'm here. you with every here. stitch. Enjoy. <laughs> I cursed you out with every stitch. <laughs> This is not made yeah. I hope you like it. Yeah. We've all had that game where you get it and it's so pretty, and then you start working on it and you're like, God, why did I buy this? Uh, yes. Exactly. I don't like I have it. a ton of them. Yeah. It doesn't look right. Why did I do this? Right. So. Yeah. They will be gifts. Yeah. They will be gifts. Yeah. I'm done with gifts. You, let me tell you something. I knit last year because I used to make socks for David every yeah. birthday in October. And then for Christmas, yeah. I'd make him a pair of socks. What do you well, mean? There's used two to. Pairs. Here's why. You have to. No, you no, have I don't. To. Because the uh, the birthday socks and the Christmas socks are sitting there and have not been used. What? I'm done. No. That's it. Start wearing them and then I'll start making more. Otherwise, no. That's it. I yep. make stuff for okay. my kids and because they're knit worthy and they'll wear them. And my son's girlfriend models for me. So whatever I make that she's that size, she gets to keep it. So cool. Um, yeah. So that's for her. Well, now this niece, is so not. She models for me too. But well, David yeah. needs a good stern talking no. to. No, no. He no, needs a talking no. to. Hold on. It's not, it's not he doesn't want them. He can't get it over his foot or he can't bend him? his leg enough to put the socks mm -hmm. on. Well, come on, trad wife, get down on your hands and knees and put his socks on. What's wrong with you? They have those sock things you can I help you put them. your socks on. I already knit them. That's as far as I go. Okay. They have um, those sock things that you can that help you put your I socks bought, on when you can't. I anyway. bought him one of those for Christmas. Okay. Uh, I've done all that I need to do. I knit the socks. I bought him the sock putter on her. Okay. A that's sock what I call it. That's yeah. what it is. The putter on her. It's up to What's him. What's he gonna do? Go sockless. Yeah, that's well, because what he does. That touch his toes. So there's okay, two David. pairs of socks sitting there. I'm not gonna make any more until he starts wearing those. Oh, you are one harsh mistress. I'm a bitch. That's You're tough. right. I'm a bitch. That's tough. If I couldn't put my socks on, 
Uh, I bought him. A, I bought him a machine or whatever to put his socks on for him. Oh, right. if I could. Oh, golly. Well, he needs a good stern talking to then if he expects birthday well, socks. Call him then. up and tell him. You I'm got gonna, his I'm number. Say that she will. He's going to get another <laughs> call from Australia. Out of the blue. I've got to find out his number and yeah, say. He's going to so ring. His phone's going to ring in five minutes. Why aren't you? No, 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 no. She'll wait till he's, he'll be driving somewhere. Yeah, right. <laughs> he'll put her on the speaker phone. It just opened oh. with, Are you wearing socks right now? Why aren't you wearing <laughs> like, socks? No. I'll be like, No. I'll be like, Is Therese home? Sorry, wrong number. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Sorry. Oh, there are people in the world. Two pairs of socks that I did that he has not worn. So I should make more. Sure? No. I don't know. Are you sure he actually likes them? Maybe that's just he doesn't really like them. He likes. Well, if he doesn't, then I'm not going to make any more either. So I'm out. Maybe he's, he's just too scared to tell you that they're crap. Then, they're not. I mean, I know. I've seen them for myself. They're lovely. I've seen them for myself. Okay. Very good <laughs> sock. Then that's fine. If they're crap, then I will just make my own crap, and he I'm doesn't need any help. crap from me. I'm just trying to help Thank my you. friend, Dave. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. You have you have freed me. You have freed me from my burden of socks. knitting socks for him. Thank you. And when he oh, has, and when he what he Why don't I have any socks? Because Joe Bob says you don't need any. Yeah, when he no, starts he wearing you, and You've then you don't make him anymore. He has like, a no, no, already, you know, and you know that. Says, crochet Joe, Joe him a lovely you don't need any more socks. I did. I crocheted him a corner-to-corner -corner blanket a couple years ago. The thing weighs and? 152 pounds, and <laughs> I'm not making him another blanket. No. Okay. <laughs> We're done. Maybe, he, maybe he'd like a muscle bra hat. Maybe. He has hats. He has hats. He has mittens. He has those mittens that are convertible where it's it's fingerless and then you flip them over. He has those. He has all the stuff. Hot what water bottle do cover. Them? I don't know. Oh, hot water bottle. Water bottle. It's, I don't know yeah, where they hot are. Water. I don't know. Get no, on, I know. have a water bottle. He has dogs. I was going to say, make Calvin a sweater, and then he can be his hot water oh. bottle. Yeah, Calvin perfect. has a sweater. He does. <laughs> he has one that I crocheted for him, and he has one I bought for him. Oh, wow. Calvin's all set. When he's not fighting me, he has sweaters. Does he wear them? Will he leave yeah, them on, he or does he get mad? He loves them. Yeah, he would get so cold there and when it's snowing. Gosh, he's only it tiny. It didn't snow this year because of global warming. Uh, <laughs> all right, I need to go make dinner or eat dinner. Me too. Or yeah, so, me too. Thanks for to... coming, Joe. I didn't think you were going to make it this week. I thought you said thanks you were going to be off. I thought you here said I you am. Be here. Well, here I'm glad you're here. I don't know what's happening week to week. I'm sorry. We never do, right? We never. Right. None of us know. Thanks, nope. Anne, for coming. We Thanks, always Anne, thank you for you. coming. And we will talk to everybody later. Thanks, everybody. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this episode. Like, like and subscribe Tell if your you friends. didn't. <laughs> tell your friends. Go watch Politically Incorrect Knitters. Tell your friends. Go watch Politically Incorrect Knitters and Annie's Stitch in the Sky That's and perfect. Caro's podcast and uh -huh. check out all our everything. friends. And we'll see you next week. Bye, everybody. Dinners is fun. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.